Greetings, imagination connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, Robert Meyer Burnett. I invite you to watch and listen to the Designing Hollywood podcast, brought to you by Martika Abera and the great, legendary Hollywood costume designer, Marilyn Vance. I am afforded the wonderful opportunity of co-hosting the show. If you are interested in the magic of Hollywood, the design of Hollywood, the clothes of Hollywood, watch the Designing Hollywood podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts from, or find the video version on the John Campia YouTube channel. That's right, the Designing Hollywood podcast. Why would you ever want to miss it? Especially if you love the movies. <laughs> Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your master of fun and wonder, your viceroy of verisimilitude, and, most importantly, your pharaoh of physical media, Robert Meyer Burnett, and that, it, this, it, what, it, oh, this is, let's get physical media. God, it get worse every time I try and sing that. It's not a real <laughs> song, so I don't know why I sing it at all, but I do. Uh, this is Let's Get Physical Media, episode number 127. But you know, you know, I could tell you that I've been gone all week. I haven't been on the internet. People, you know, I've just been yelling at people about what's going on in the Middle East uh, on Twitter. So that's the only place you could find me. Oh, I just realized I have a scarf that my sister gave me. Uh, thanks, Colleen. That was right here. I'm like, what am I looking at? But really, y'all tune into this show for one reason. Your favorite German, my favorite German everyone's favorite German, all the way from Saarbrücken, Deutschland. That is Mr. Dieter Bastian. Greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Dieter here. Here I am, rocky like a hurricane, and welcome to the B&B Motel for Let's Get Physical Media. And Rob, I even visited a motel yesterday. I finally bow, watched... Bow, bow. Oh, you want... Oh, okay. I finally watched Psycho, the 4K, still a masterpiece. But there's one thing, Rob, that shatters... There's militude. Do you know what it is? Uh, I don't. Running away with just forty thousand dollars. You know, <laughs> into, into, by today's standard, you would get a happy meal and some coffee in Starbucks, and then you already would be in the red, considering the money that she took. You know, forty thousand dollars. Come on, come on, people. And before the show, I watched Psycho Two. Really nice transfer. Really did look amazing. Didn't know that. Dean Candy was the cinematographer oh, yeah. on the, the movie. So it really was watching it like for the first time because I haven't seen it actually in a long time. So from the picture. It's good. Quality, I like, did you like it? it? Yeah. For a sequel, pretty decent. Considering the time spent between the two movies, it actually fits the narrative, you know. So uh, for me, totally, totally worse in the box set. So I will go to the third one and fourth one, which I haven't seen in a long time, but from the picture quality, really nice. The 5.1 makes us a little bit iffy because the dialogue is not really centered on the center channel, but it didn't, it wasn't too distracting for me. But the transfer, considering the picture quality, really nice. And one thing, Rob, I did start Psycho and uh, we all know Universal, Arrow, but the opening logo was a Paramount logo, Rob. Am I missing something? No, no, uh, no. Uh, uh, Hitchcock did make movies for Paramount. There was a number of them that were okay. released, and then Universal re-released them. I think, like, I want to say, like, Vertigo and Rear Window were, were originally Paramount titles. I could be wrong yeah. about that, but yeah, Paramount... Yeah, that's, that's the... Yeah, because that's... the opening, opening logo, I was, whoop, Paramount? I was a little bit surprised... About mm. that. So Rob, we always start with I know I know no, what you want to know. I will want to know, yeah. So cut Martin's. You want to know about where it, where, it, where the era's tour is with uh Killers of the Flower yeah. Moon. Is that what you want to know? Got, yeah, got Martin Scorsese a bitch slept or Taylor slept? Uh, well, actually, I, I've got your uh, – one, once again, our friend Anthony D'Alessandro over at Deadline uh, says – here's the headline. 
Taylor Swift still bejeweled with 32 million second weekend. Killers of the Flower Moon brings adults back to cinemas with a $23 million opening and an A minus hey. cinema score. Uh, the overall box office at around $86.8 million is off 24% from a year ago. But AMC's Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, and Apple Paramount Imperative Entertainment's Martin Scorsese movie Killers of the Flower Moon kept the business afloat and popcorn popping with a respective weekend take of $32 million for Taylor and $23 million for Killers of the Flower Moon. We're still waiting on Apple and Paramount's official number, but it's $23 million. Kudos to Paramount here from changing up the release of the Scorsese pick from limited to wide. There was no need to tee off in a very non-competitive marketplace with demand like this. Killers of the Flower Moon is an exceptional start for what is a very long movie, longer than Oppenheimer, and a great beginning for Apple's foray into wide theatrical business, especially at a time when actors can't promote because of the actors' strike. Imagine if there wasn't an actors' strike, how much higher could this have gone? Also, it's an applaudable start for a period movie, this being set in the 1920s. Quite often, tracking sources pin period as a factor that dogs grosses. And the exits are great for Killers of the Flower Moon with an A- cinema score. Killers of the Flower Moon is one of three A grades for Oscar winner Scorsese. With cinema score, the other two being The Departed and Goodfellas. Both had A-. minuses. Comscore Screen Engine's post-track remains high at 88% and 4.5 stars and 72% recommend. Cinema Score's audiences have been hard on several Scorsese classics and haven't handed him many A grades during his career. Casino got a B-, minus. The Aviator got a B+. Plus. By the way, the Aviator fucking rules. I don't care what anyone says. Gangs of New York at B. Wolf of Wall Street got a C. What? And Shutter Island got a C-. Minus. Okay. Or pardon me, C+. Plus. With exits like these, expect this award season front runner to play for weeks on end. Some estimating that it'll have four times or five times multiple states side the end off its opening here. Some 50% bought their tickets to the movie Day Of, and it's a very encouraging sign for word of mouth. Also hopeful is the fact that 44% of the audience was under 30. Paramount domestic distribution boss Chris Aronson says that stat is very encouraging for the state of cinemas. This is a story that needs and deserves to be seen on the big screen. It's a touch point for younger audiences who might find that history has been limiting. Some might wonder how a $200 million movie before P&A from Apple Original Films, even with a global opening of $44 million, might be considered a win. Quite often, we'd be throwing hatchets at such P&Ls, profit and losses. While this might be considered a flop for a motion picture studio, several sources tell me that a tech, that tech company Apple doesn't count it this way. This is a form of advertising for them to get people to come to their ecosystem. That's how they see it. They don't see it as pure profit and loss. In fact, it's a marketing expense for them. This is very important for people to understand because from a tax perspective, to hear that a tech company like Apple looks at a $200 million expense for Killers of the Flower Moon as marketing and advertising, that's how they'll chalk it up. That's a business expense. So that's very different, whereas a movie studio cannot write off a movie as a marketing expense. Yeah. <laughs> Apple can. So this is, I mean, this is, again, this is the way things are changing. Amazon can do the same thing. Um, so this is very, very important. They don't see it as pure profit and loss. It's a marketing expense for them, says one wise film finance executive. Entertainment for Apple is but a sliver of their prime revenues amid iPads, computers, and iPhones. When it comes to determining the success of a theatrical release from a streamer such as Apple or Amazon, one distribution source tells me as long as a theatrical rental covers their marketing expense, it's a job well done. In the case of Air, which Amazon shelled out $125 million for and only made $90 million worldwide, I understand the streamer continues to relish the long tail of the movie and its impact on Prime Video in terms of views, subscriber hold, and resonance on other parts of Amazon.com. It's all because it was a theatrical release. There's just other boxes that a theatrical release ticks for streamers other than just pure profit and loss. Says one source close to the pick... The movie is synonymous with the Apple brand for quality, and the quality of this movie speaks volumes about what they want to accomplish in the film space. It's incredible and something to be admired. At 23 million, Killers of the Flower Moon is just north of DiCaprio's opening box office average, 
with Scorsese of 19 million, and it's the best start for a De Niro and Scorsese combo, beating Cape Fear's 10.2 million opening back when ska music was in style. Taylor won Friday at 10.4 million to Killers of the Flower Moon's 9.4 million, which includes Thursday previews of 2.6 million. Swift stayed strong Saturday, climbing 20% uh, over 27% over Friday with 13.2 million, and Killers of the Flower Moon made 8.1. But remember, uh, it's three and a half hours long. Three and a half hours, so yeah. The Eras Tour becomes the first concert film in history to make more than a hundred million at the d- domestic box office, and did so in just five days of showtime. And showtimes. And remember, Taylor's only playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. so not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, very, very cool. Uh, let's talk about where we're at. So, yeah. the Eras Tour has made one hundred thirty-one million. Domestic. This is all domestic. Killers of the Flower Moon made 23.23 million. The Exorcist Believer has made a total of 54.2 million. Paw Patrol 2 is at 56 million. Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, a re release. Uh, the total lifetime domestic is 81.4 million. That is surprising that the Nightmare Before Christmas in its entire life has only made 81.4 million domestic, which is crazy. Yeah. Saw that's in its to- whole lifetime. What's twenty five years old? Twenty years old. Saw X is up to forty seven point two million. Horror is still here, and the creator unfortunately has only made thirty six point seven million. Yeah. Leo Bloody Sweet, which I don't know what that is, is four point six million. A Haunting in Venice has made forty point nine million, and The Blind has made fifteen point six million, and The Nun too eighty five point three million. <laughs> so I just want to point out uh, for all you Swifties out there. A girl Taylor uh, making a fifteen. They're 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 calling it a fifteen million dollar uh, budget on the Eras okay. Tour concert movie, which means it's made huge money. It's a huge yeah. win and, and profitable uh, for them. And you go Taylor. They can All probably write that off for marketing too. Who knows? Yeah. So very very exciting deets. Cool cool to know. Uh, so what's coming down? The Pike next week. Have we some Halloween movies coming out? Oh, I'm Five sure. Five Nights at Freddy's, I think. Yeah, Five out. Nights at Freddy's is coming, but it's a day and date release with on, on Peacock, Peacock. Exactly. which yeah. doesn't bode well for the movie. I'm just gonna <laughs> say. Yeah. And you yeah. look, I want Five Five Nights at Freddy's to be good. I do. I want it to be good. Yeah. Is it gonna be good? Mm, I don't okay. know. Okay. Who's to say? Who's to say? But exactly. And. Rob, we talked a little bit about last week, and I saw it this weekend. I watched Dark Harvest. Oh, you did, and? and? Awesome. Awesome movie. Really? For me, hopefully, Amazon will release it on Blu-ray. It's one of their MGM titles, like Totally Killer. Uh, And I was going in relatively, I would say, blind, hadn't hadn't seen a trailer. And I was totally, for me, great. Not every question will get answered in Dark Harvest but I totally had a blast and I would buy it and it is, it is directed by David Slade and since I rearranged my collection Rob I actually can show what David Slade did he did actually Hard Candy yeah he did 30 Days of Night yep. and he actually did the third Twilight movie too but I totally had a great time with, with Dark Harvest considering the, the creature, the effects, the setting. I would buy it, Dark Harvest, if it would be released on physical media. Hopefully. Hopefully. The m- uh, more great horror yeah. coming out. Yeah. Coming totally. out. So totally killer and Dark Harvest for me. Two hits on Amazon Prime Video from MGM in combination with their MGM logo. Nice. Oh, MGM, I just want to I want to tell everybody that uh, Bill Hunt from the digitalbits.com will be joining us to talk about the deluge of 4K announcements. Uh, we got a lot of great 4K stuff coming down the pike. That's very exciting. Criterion's coming out with a banger January. Um, and we'll talk about that soon. But uh, we also got a lot of letters on this show yeah, today. Yeah, exactly. A lot exactly. of letters. So I would say I start with one. Okay, and please. the first one, Rob, comes from Carl Wolf. It's always nice to see a new name. From Baltimore. Robin Dieter, last Sunday I went into mourning. I have an LG 3D TV, and as I prepared to watch last week's Let's Get Physical Media, the TV went on the fritz. 
There is no more picture, just sound. No. The TV me, yeah, I know, Rob. I know. It hurt. It, it did hurt me too. The TV served me well for the past decade. I loved my Marvel 3D movies, and was terribly saddened. But Rob, since you always ask why isn't this title in 4K, I decided to dive into a 4K TV. Due to budget constraints from divorce, I had to get a TV on the cheaper side of things. I already had a few 4K Blu-ray combo discs when studios still did that. I also have a PS5. The picture was better than on HD. Even some of the HDX movies improved. I bought Highlander Director's Cut and it looked not bad at all. I ordered Lord of the Rings Extended Trilogy on 4K. I already have the Blu-ray set and thanks for making those appendices. Those features really show the love Peter Jackson and company had for the books. It's true. Anyways, being a beginner of 4K, do you have a couple of suggestions to buy in 4K? P.S. I super chatted in May on your birthday. I was in the hospital May 16, uh, my birthday, getting the triple bypass, and you wished me well. I'm doing great. Good to know, uh, Carl. My 3D TV, not so much. Maybe I'll find another 3D TV that's not too expensive somewhere. Will be hard, hard to seek out, Carl. Rob, do you have any suggestions just from the top of your head considering buying 4K stuff for his new 4K TV? Well, I mean, I would go with... Or essentials, or essential, essential 4Ks. Well, I mean, you know, first of all, 2001, Apocalypse Now, the, the Godfather movies, Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049, Dune, the new Dune, and the old Dune, Dune, if you like it. Um, Avatar, obviously. Um... Uh, you know, I just got a new. Well, I got it the, for this week. The Fifth Element and Leon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many, there's so many great uh, 4K discs, and I would suggest going to sites like DVD Beaver, um, uh, play, places like that. But just off the top of my head, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, the thing is, if you want 4K, you kind of want to be a 4K. You, you know, go for those big budget, great transfers. But then again, also going in and, and you know, like my beloved second sight, Dawn of the Dead disc. Dawn of the Dead's never looked better. I'd love to know what Phantasm looks like in 4K. You will get that disc, group. I promise you. I, I was, you. I got because, to see... Because I, I, I can intersect that, Rob, because the leather face that I showed you where you were involved, Rob, I did find out on one of my websites has an Easter egg, considering the theoretical version, if you go to the deleted scenes and push the right button at or the alternate ending, you get a different movie version of the movie, a little bit a little bit longer. So there are actually three versions of the movie. Wow, also you got to get that to me, Easter dude. Egg. You yeah, got to get me yeah. that. So, an Easter egg that I did find out on one of my websites that I... Uh, Ooh, cheeky. Wizard, you wizard. Germans are cheeky with that. Yeah. Look at that. Just, just to let you know, there's another movie version as an Easter egg on those discs. Well, I, I just wanna I wanna offer condolences on the death any any death of a three D television it is a sad is day. Tough, tough. You know, I mean I'll I have a lot of three D discs and yeah. uh, I enjoy three D. I love home three D. It's too bad. I mean, honestly I blame the death of three D on the, the the theater owners poor present poor presentation killed it and bad 3d killed it too a lot of bad post conversions yeah. they tried to cash in yeah. um especially yeah. in germany rob there were, were a lot of 3d movies coming out they were not really shot in 3d or not really uh, uh converted the right way you know just terrible. to slap on slap on the 3d uh yeah. stem on it terrible yeah. So I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad your heart operation went well, and you know, I hope that yeah. um, I hope that uh, your marriage ended. And it didn't uh, rake you over the coals too much. Exactly, uh, Carl. Just look for the movies you like if they're available in 4K. And like Rob says, go to the websites. Look what those websites say about the transfer. Is it worth getting a new edition of the movie? The next one, of course, comes from Ryan Knight, Robert. Uh, the subject is why does the Taylor Swift movie ne, does the Taylor Swift movie qualify for Best Picture? Robert, on Friday I was watching a YouTube podcast when the question came up: 
Can the Taylor Swift movie qualify for Best Picture Oscar nomination? I won't mention the hosts, his, her, they, them name, but the answer was only possible as a documentary. Right. The only qualification a movie had to met was to be released in a major market uh, and a minimum of seven days. This is why Oscar bait movies show up in New York or LA, or LA in December. It's not for box office revenue, but Oscar qualifications. Are there other criteria a movie must met to qualify? Script, dialogue, plot, multiple cast members? Probably could search the internet for the answer, but it's more fun to hear from a Hollywood insider. Don't let that com compliment go to your head. Still not satisfied over your Morricone Williams. And <laughs> well, I, so, no, I mean, I mean, look, the, the Taylor Swift, the, the yeah. film, it, it, it is a documentary. Okay. You know, it's 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 um, it isn't a narrative feature and a narrative yeah. feature is very different. I mean, a narrative feature has to be written and a narrative feature uh, where there's a Taylor Swift documentary doesn't have any of that. You're filming an actual event that occurred, you know, so it, a live concert film could definitely be nominated. I, 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 I don't know, to be honest. So there is the documentary category. I don't know if a documentary I mean, I, I think that any movie could be considered for Best Picture. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, I just don't know. That's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, maybe we'll have to look into that and find out. But I maybe, yeah. I just, I don't know if any documentary, I'm sure there's been a documentary that has been, if if it's true, there's there has to be a documentary that has been nominated for uh, best picture or something like but that. But actually, we, we have that know. separate section at the Academy Awards, so wouldn't make that much sense to put it. In yeah, the, I, the I, I can't section. imagine. Well, I, also. Yeah, yeah, I just don't think it would it would get nominated. Okay. So yeah. Okay, there you go, Brian. The next one comes from Andrew W. Just the Incredible Hulk on Blu-ray and the MCU TV reboot. Hello, Rob. Hope all is well with you. I have been reliving my childhood by binging the Incredible Hulk TV show with Bill Bixby, <laughs> Bill Bixby on Blu-ray. If I may be so bold, I have a suggestion for the new MCU TV showrunners and filmmakers. Go back and watch to the uh, to the intro for the original Incredible Hulk TV series. If they can't sum up their program ideas for the who, what, why, where, and how as concisely and clearly as the intro for the Incredible Hulk, then don't greenlight the show. To paraphrase the intro, huh. scientist experiments on himself to unlock a mystery of humanity. It fails and someone dies in the process. He is now cursed and without help, he is forever on the run from the law and from himself while he searches for a cure and a way to prove his innocence. Ask yourself, can any of us sum up the most recent MCU offerings this clearly? <laughs> if I was pitching the show to a studio, they would expect nothing less. Thank you for your time. I uh, even know Rob, there was an MCU show in the in the making of of Hulk, for Hulk. Well, no, I mean there was She Hulk. I think he's just speaking in general terms, you know, oh, okay. if, because okay. of the opening credit, and he's not yeah. wrong. I mean, that's yeah. a great. <laughs> it's a great. Yeah, I think the the MCU shows. I honestly think that the MCU shows are are overly complex. And, you know, to me, what I thought the MCU TV shows would be like would be like a, like a six-issue miniseries in comic book form. Like, you know, you'd a character, there might be a character in the Avengers, and then they would do a Hawkeye six-issue six miniseries. And it was the, the best of the miniseries, like the Wolverine miniseries, the four-issue Wolverine miniseries was really satisfying. That was a really great story. And that's kind of what I thought should have been happening with this stuff, but unfortunately, it hasn't really been. Yeah. So, but yeah. I think it's a good point. Yeah, totally. Uh, from Brian Knight again, uh -oh. Mike Flanagan and Kevin Smith. Robert, I watched how you raved over the fall of the House of Usher, directed by Mike Flanagan. Flanagan worked with Kevin Smith. Do you see any Kevin Smith nods in the series? I don't expect Jay and Silent Bob, but maybe some of Smith's humor. Maybe Jay and Silent Bob as Abbott and Costello in classic Universal horror movies. As a fan of the Vincent Price, uh, Edgar Allan Poe movies, 
How do they compare or would have been if Vincent Price was still around to be in this series? Should have created the series on on the number of Vincent Price, Edgar Allan Poe's. Still probably 11 Vincent Price's. Unfortunately, Rob, from my uh, perspective, I haven't seen the show yet. Uh, have you finished? Oh, dude. Fall? Fall of the House of <laughs> dude. <Us? laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I would say that the fall of the House of Usher, uh, it, it, I didn't feel it was prestige television. It's not A-list, no. but yeah. it's great. To me, it's it, it's Flanagan went full on juicy B movie with this thing. In a way, it, it's not you know Corman's Vincent Price adaptations. If you're if you're an Edgar Allan Poe fan, this whole series is such a love letter to Edgar Allan Poe. And interestingly enough, if memory serves, Frank Langella was supposed to be the lead, you know, playing playing really? yeah, he, and then of course. He was dismissed because people thought he was telling off-color jokes. He basically got canceled. And having worked with Frank Langella on Superman Returns, I mean, he was such a delightful man. And um, I think Bruce Greenwood, who plays, was it Roderick? Um, he's great. He's great in this show. This Dude, this show is so much fun to watch. It's so much fun to watch. And um, if you're again the, the the clever nods to Edgar Allan Poe and all that, I lo I loved, I loved it. And but, do you feel it, any, any not... Kevin Smith Kevin Smith nods to, to no. them? No, no, no. And I I gotta give it up. I mean, uh, Carla Gugino. I think I was talking about this last week. Yeah. Uh, what 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 a delight she must have been <laughs> having the best time. I mean, my God, for 20 years, 25 years, whatever. I mean that woman has lost none of her sex appeal. Uh, she's still got a great ass, which you see in the show. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I, I, I have to say, look, here's the thing: in our 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 weird desexualized culture, sex and horror. I miss the combination of the two, and the titillation that used to function in horror. Uh, she is the perfect, I mean, it's been a long time since I, I want an action figure of her character in, 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 in <laughs> I loved her in this. She's just having a blast and she, yeah. man, Carla Gugino, mm, 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 mm. Mm -mm. she's delish. She's been delish right. for 25 years. I mean, I thought it was hilarious when she was cast as Silk Spectre one in Watchmen and they put her in all this old age makeup, you know? I mean, they did have flashback scenes. Uh, I mean, oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm just a big fan of hers. She can do no wrong. You go, Carl Gugino. I mean, she's probably going to be 80 pulling this shit off. So I loved it. I loved this show. I thought it was a, it's a great Halloween, the lead up to Halloween. A lot of fun. And speaking of Mike Flanagan, since I rearranged some stuff, I stumbled across, for me, this was the first movie I've seen from him. I stumbled across over Absentia, which for me was a great little independent movie and uh, which put Mike Flanagan on the map for me to keep keep a lookout for him. Absentia. Nice. Mike Flanagan. Next letter from Brian Knight. Another nail in the DVD coffin. Robert, you have made many fine points on the demise of the DVDs and DVD players. I would like to add another nail in the coffin. Oh, God. I've been collecting DVDs since 1998. My first DVD, Cannonball Run, with an L. Ruddy commentary. After 25 years, I have found all my uh, Holy Grail DVDs. The last being the German imports of Water with Michael Caine and Alec Guinness in Little Lord uh, Fondleroy. These are available in the United States. Another reason for a Region B player. Side note, Buy a separate Region B DVD player. Avoid the suppliers who crack a player to make them region free. My last holy grail would be a Blu-ray of a, uh, a taxing woman and a taxi taxing woman returns. With my current eyesight, those are Juzo. TV. Those are Juzo Atami's yeah. Japanese films. Love those oh, movies. Okay. Nice. He he also made uh, yeah. Tempopo, which is one of my favorite films of all time. Okay. With my current eyesight upgrading from DVD to Blu-ray 
and Blu-ray to 4K simply would be a waste of money. Oh, I don't, I don't know about that, uh, Brian. I still look for the occasional new releases of uh, Chess Franco, Classic Vampire, or Kirky movie. Really don't plan to collect many movies from the 2000s forward because they are readily available on television or satellite streaming services. Just another... For now, buddy. Penny. For now. Exactly. For now. But it's a good point. Uh, yeah, totally. And Rob, I got a letter which I don't actually want to read because the last part in the letter, he said, I'd rather you didn't read this entire letter on the show because I have a mortgage that needs to be paid and I would keep it that way. So Colin, since Rob and I don't censor stuff here because we want the X-rated stuff, the NC-17 stuff, if you want your letter read, censor yourself what <laughs> I should read out, you know? Because I don't know, you, you just said, don't read the entire letter, but I don't know what can I read from this letter? Well, it, you know, if it's a personal attack on somebody, you know, or or if he's no, it's admitting... not a personal attack. It's more about the Warner situation, and he he works a little bit for the. Oh, I read this letter. I, I read this yeah. letter now. Now this is yeah. a great letter. This, by the way, this letter made the end. The last sentence of this letter, yeah, made me. I did a spit take. <laughs> the last sentence was still. No, wait, wait, no, 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 read. You gotta get. You gotta get. Okay. You gotta read. So, okay. but no, but I think that this is, uh, I can, okay, here's the thing. Oh, uh, why don't we just, I understand I read, uh, uh, some, some parts of it, but I don't know what he yeah. is comfortable with it. That's yeah. the problem. For no, me. no, it's, 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 it's a really great, perhaps we shouldn't yeah. read all of his letter because he is employed. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Let me give you the gist. Let me okay, give you the well, gist. You I'll give you the gist. It's from Colin. Just Colin. I said just Colin. He says that he works at Warner Brothers. Yeah. And exactly. and his letter, first of all, I want to be clear because the way he wrote his letter was a little unclear. So yeah. I don't know if he works for Warner Arc. So at Warner Brothers, there are basically two different divisions that we always talk about on the show. One of those divisions is Warner Archive. Now, Warner Archive is a label underneath Warner Home Video. So Warner Home Video releases like they put out The Flash and they put out, yeah. you know, all their big Could catalog be. titles. So Warner Archive is not, for instance, in charge of, say, The Exorcist. What Warner yeah. Archive does is they're going into the deep catalog of Warner Brothers and they're releasing classic, those classic Westerns, classic Fritz Lang movies, classic, and they've done some newer movies that are even more deep catalog stuff. Like they put out, well, Palmetto is coming out for them from them, and that that's part of their uh, Warner Archive put out a lot of great cult titles. They put out The Hunger, you know, they they on on Blu-ray, um, and and George Feltenstein is in charge of Warner Archive. And what's really great about Warner Archive is because they have George Feltenstein, who as an executive and as a film fan, he's been in the business. For the better part of four decades, the man knows everything, and he's such a lover of cinema. And um, you know, there aren't many people like him left in the entertainment business. And I'm not even saying that he's old because he's not. And he's a, he's a, he's a, he's got he's a spark plug of energy. He'll he'll when he starts talking, he lights up a room. So he's in charge of and and when when I say he's in charge, he makes sure that like. They get the classic. They don't do Photoshop new versions of. of yeah. They use the real. He goes back and finds the best art. He cares. He's the last thing a corporation wants. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is ridiculous because you'd think he'd want. He'd be the first thing a corporation wants. He he, he is single handedly. If you look at Warner Archives' output so far this year. It has been a celebration of of Warner's past that most people have forgotten these days. But if you go back, it's it's just an incredible bevy of titles that are ripe for rediscovery, and they should give Warner Archive its own channel on Max. If for nothing else, then all the work that the people at Warner Archive have done in terms of restoration, in terms of transfers, in terms of what George Feltenstein has brought to Warner Archive. 
So Warner Archive is a different division. It's a it's a separate division. Yeah. And what we have lamented is what Warner Brothers needed during its hundredth anniversary was a guy like George Feltenstein overseeing everything. But the problem is, in the corporate world, there's an, everyone's protecting their own little fiefdoms. You know, they're they're they don't want to lose their jobs. I mean, it's amazing to me at some uh, that at that a place like Warner Brothers. And unfortunately, this is the corporate world. There, within a company, everybody's competing against everybody else. It's a cutthroat, ridiculous game that everyone's playing. But that's why you wind up getting covers like we got for The Exorcist, because the people that are running, it's more like theatrical marketing people started taking over. There's nobody who is in charge of Warner Brothers that understands the, the, the I mean at Warner Brothers their main their main home video department. They don't know there's no one there that really knows the catalog that knows what people want. Do you know what movie had its 40th birthday yesterday? You the probably right stuff. won't. Oh, you did know. Well, I uh, that's why we do the show together. Rob, I thanks, should never thanks to, doubt you. <laughs> thanks to an Instagram post from Charlie. I know that. Okay. 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 <laughs> so yeah, and now the right it clicked immediately when you when you asked the question. It clicked okay. And by the way, I should also mention today. Speaking of the hunger, is Catherine Deneuve's birthday, and um, if you've never seen the Umbrellas of Cherbourg or the two the young girls of Rochefort, 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 Rochefort I don't know how to pronounce it in French. Uh, if you haven't seen these movies, you should see them. Catherine Deneuve is a goddess. I've actually met her in person and uh, back in the 80s, and she is indeed a goddess in person. I mean, my God, she looks at you and smiles, melt your heart. Um, it's her birthday today. But for instance, here, here's, here's what's difficult for the people at the studios to understand. And this is the problem with all, in my mind, all corporations, and it is killing America. And here's what it is. So there are people that are willing to buy, say, 4K physical media discs of movies, right? If you look at reports or marketing reports or whatever, there in no way, shape, or form would the right stuff wind up on one of those reports. So the people at Warner Brothers, like, the right stuff, then they'll just go back and look at the actual numbers. The right stuff was not a hit when it came out. So there's no actual data that anyone can point to and go, oh, we should put this out because people are thinking to themselves, the people at Warner Brothers, like, no one, why should we put this out? The Right Stuff is a beloved film, and everybody, first of all, that banger of a soundtrack, if they remastered that shit in Dolby Atmos, it would rock. I mean, it has an unbelievable soundtrack. I think it was nominated, if it didn't win, an Oscar yeah. for sound design because it's incredible. They don't even know. Like the, the people at Warner Brothers wouldn't even know that the right stuff should come out. It should absolutely have been a part of their 100th anniversary. It's about the dawn of the American space program, the seven original Mercury astronauts. It has an incredible cast in it. I mean, everybody from Harry Shearer and Jeff Goldblum to Scott Glenn, you know, to Sam Shepard, to Barbara Hershey. I mean, to Ed Harris. The, the, the cast is amazing. Dennis Quaid. Uh, it's a fantastic film. Are we going to get a 4K of it? No. Why? I mean, that would be that would be a, on a list of my top ten Warner Brothers catalog titles to get in 4K and Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. So anyway, our friend is correct that all of these interdepart the internecine warfare that happens in the different departments and everybody's trying to cover their own ass it's it's sad it's a it's a state of affairs that corporations have fostered themselves and it isn't necessarily conducive to great business especially for a studio like warner brothers yeah on the other hand cool. and we'll talk about it later there is some good stuff there's there's and and i, I actually since i want to say one of the things in the news that i wanted to mention uh, they just announced because they have the musical coming out. Warner Brothers has the musical of the color purple coming yeah. out in December. They uh, did uh, the color, the original Steven Spielberg's original from the mid eighties. I have to say that here is an example credit where credit is due. 
Here's an example of, I think, going the original artwork was kind of this graphic silhouette, yeah. but they decided to make their own cover, and here's the cover. I think this is an absolutely beautiful photograph, or, I mean, artistic, it's not a, I, I don't know if it's a Photoshop treatment of, of Whoopi Goldberg's face. If it's, It looks like it's painted artwork. I don't know if it is or not. Yeah. Maybe they, I think this is a gorgeous cover. I think I love the color purple. Um it was the second movie I ever cried in, the first being Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Say what you say what you will, or whatever. But I, I love this movie. I've always loved this movie. I saw it in the theater like five times. I love this film. I think this is a beautiful cover. And this is Warner Brothers doing something right. And I'm glad they're putting this out. And I got to say, I love this 100th anniversary logo. I really do. Yeah, I wish too. I had. I think it's so cool. I wish I had it on. Yeah. If It would look great on the right stuff. I think this is a beautiful example of Warner Brothers doing something right, and um, compared to that stupid fucking Exorcist cover that they did domestically. Now, also, in the letter, he mentions that Warner Brothers uh, here domestically and Warner Brothers UK are very different, and Warner Brothers UK did that awesome Casablanca box with all the special features and the swag, and uh, did we get that in America? No, because the people in America don't no they don't know and i hate that i mean my god if you're working in a major motion picture studio and you don't know that catalog backwards and forwards why are you working there but to be fair it's people that weren't hired to work in home video they've been moved over from a different department but anyway so what rob was actually saying that so the last the line letter of the, writer, yeah the, the letter writer is actually as rob not happy with the situation exactly what is coming out but colin if you want your letter to get read write it new so that we know we can we can read it and the last one comes from wait wait you got to read though his last line the last sentence of I, his no, no 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 <laughs> the last line was still it could be worse i could be working for a sendia <laughs> now for those of you who don't know what that is and why i busted out i i still was drinking another uh mason yeah. jar of water as i was enjoying my morning coffee as well <laughs> ascendia you know i ordered the hard target box set one of 2000 uh maybe the lovely emma bannon can find one but i had ordered that i had ordered contempt and i had ordered the hot spot the radiance the hot spot and um they never Oof. showed up Never, but I will say, you know, the last couple of boxes because I keep forgetting to ask for when I order stuff. Because I got, I mean, uh, we got a big month uh, coming up because yeah. there's the Hellraiser box set coming from Arrow. You know, yeah. that shit better show up. I mean, I did get my Wicker Man, got my Wicker Man, so it's cool. Fingers it's cool. crossed. Okay, so last letter for the day comes from Maliki Fallon. Hi, Rob and Dida. Here's my letter. I have a small rant, a question, and a dilemma. With the Best Buy news and people saying it's the death of media, I just want to say this, okay, we uh, we all knew it was going to happen. My rant, I was thinking the other day about a question a young person asked me about physical media. Why do you still collect discs? When I first heard those words, my face turned as red as Rob's does when he thinks about space whales. <laughs> Yet I was surprised... Uh, Yet I was surprised with my response. I said two words, love and history. Like an old man screaming from the clouds. Sorry, uh, sorry, Rob, I am taking that title away from you. I am two years older. Uh, be happy you have more hair than I do. My first <laughs> love was movies. We never forget our first love. I was five years old when it happened. So let me proudly scream as the old man as I am that the reason I love physical media is because I love movies. Do you mind if I take a few minutes of your time and appreciate physical media where it's at? Let's talk a little history with regards to physical media. When I first started collecting physical media, was in the video cassette era. My first video cassette was Halloween. It cost me seventy dollars at the time. At that time, to the youngsters. By the way, I just want that was my first physical media too. The yeah, media Halloween VHS tape. It cost me $70 at that time. To the youngsters out there who complain about Blu-ray and 4K uh, quality, 
Watch a movie on, on video cassette. Let me describe it to you. You would watch a film presented pen and scan, and the image today would be considered blurry at best. Yet the best thing about video cassette was that it gave us ownership to our favorite, our favorite films unedited. Now comes now comes Laserdisc. For the kids out there, Laserdisc was a record-sized disc that was first introduced uh, that first introduced film lovers to three things that I never thought were possible with collecting films. Director's commentaries, director's cuts, and letterbox presentation. If Laserdisc did not exist, there would be no Criterion, no Abyss, the director's cut, or Aliens, director's cut. Hey guys, remember Elite Night, uh, Elite's Night of the Living Dead in THX or Dawn of the Dead box set on Laserdisc, which Rob has, I think, the Japanese one from Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Ooh, ooh the memories, the, the memories, guys. Uh, now comes DVD. DVD was a mini extension of Laserdisc. Everything that was great about Laserdisc was gonna be on a smaller disc at that time. Movies became more affordable with DVD and it had Laserdisc quality. Even a little bit better when it comes to the picture. Rob, I want to stop right here and thank you for all the extras you created for films. The film nerd appreciated what you accomplished with those features. I want to take a moment and say this. Rob, you are part physical media history. How cool is that? Now comes Blu-ray. I said I would stop collecting with DVD. Yet, when I played Blade Runner on Blu-ray, that was for me. Uh, that was for me. The quality was amazing, and the four disc set with extras was a gift from heaven. Again, I said I would stop with Blu-ray. Finally, we come to the end with 4K. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop. Yet, like Michael Corleon says, they pull me back in. It was not your typical reference disc that made me fall in love with the 4K format, but movies that would not expect to show such detail. I put on both Zombie and Grease in, on 4K, fantastic transfers, and I was blown away. I know 4K is the end game for us collectors. Yet, uh, yet what a glorious end it is. Most movies I see on 4K bring tear to, tears to my eyes of the sound and presentation. Just like Pinhead says, oh, such sights. As you say, Rob, I'm also one foot in the grave. Yet, if 4K is the end, I'm so happy to li have lived to experience it with the movies that I love. My rent is over. Now, my question of the day. What movie are you and Dita going to watch on Halloween weekend or day? Finally, my dilemma that only Rob can help me with My one 350 Tommy Enterprise is coming next week. <laughs> so how can I sneak? How can I sneak it by my partner without her knowing it and display it with all my Hot Toys figures? Love the show and happy Halloween. Oh, how can he sneak it past this love? Well, dude, apparently it's 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 first of all it's a 50 pound box and it's three feet by three feet. <laughs> So, and, 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 you know, it, it's also not a cheap item. So a cursory glance at the internet will tell you it's 600 bucks. <laughs> um, and uh, how do you sneak it by your partner? Here's what you do. Just wait. I mean, if I don't know where you live. It's an apartment, a garage, a house, whatever you got. You know, you can't, like, leave it out on the doorstep. And if she comes home, or you, when you say your partner, it could be a guy or girl that won't assume anything. Whoever your partner is, first of all, if you have to sneak it by him, there's a problem. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um, I, I sneak everything by him. You know, it's uh, I use my excuse, which is usually true. I'm not lying. I'm like, I paid for this a year ago. In the case of this, you paid it 16, 17 months ago. Um, but what you got to do is you just got to get it in the house, get it out of the box as soon as possible. I don't think you're going to save the box unless you aren't happy with it and want to send it away. Sure. Just, just, just say set, it, you think just, it is a present from someone. <laughs> just set it up. I, I think I think um there's there's a great there's a great movie and I want I can't remember what the title is. I'm I'm always I think it's like divorce it's not divorce Italian style, but there's a guy's having an affair and his wife comes in and sees him and the wife, him and the woman the mistress in the same room and the wife's like, Who is that woman? And the guy's like, What woman? That woman that's right there. And he's like, I, 
I don't know what you're talking about. It's like it's the ultimate gaslighting scene. Just do that. Where'd this giant enterprise come from? And you're like, what enterprise? That one right there. <laughs> Just say it was the model you built as a kid or something. Yeah. It's a terrible dilemma. Have, uh, and what are you going to watch for Halloween? Uh, I don't have any specifics. Probably a horror cat in the back, which will we get to when we get to physical media at the moment. Uh, so I have nothing specific. Uh, movie, not a specific movie plan for Halloween. Something horror stuff. I will find something, but not a specific yeah. movie that I will that I keep repeating on 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 Halloween. Yeah, no, I mean, I you know, I don't know. I mean, I I watch so many. I I mean, horror films. I I might, you know, what I I showed it last week, but I haven't watched yeah. it yet. I mean, I know it's not. Okay. It's since I got it from Kino Lorber. Yeah, maybe Black Sabbath. I'll show Elizabeth Black Sabbath because she's never seen it. Um, something like that. Yeah. Probably okay. By the way, so you Rob, know that yeah, yeah. Uh, that that the unofficial sponsor, their name was Kino, a video delight. <laughs> they brought the classics back <laughs> in the dead of night in 4K Dolby Vision, at most in the air. They take you on a journey to a world so rare with silent films in black and white. John Frankenheimer's thrill and fright, ninjas lurking in the dark. Kino Lorber left a mark. Kino Lorber, oh, home video. <laughs> Never mind, I'll stop. <laughs> Remember, one day I'm going to actually record that and make a real Kino Lorber video. Yeah. Rob, we have still a few minutes left until Bill comes. I would say we show some physical media. Let's show some. Well, that's kind of why I wanted to show some physical media. Yeah. Because do you know what I got from Kino Lorber this week? Now, remember, yeah. John Frankenheimer's The Challenge came out, and you know what a Burnett axiom is. Uh, there is nothing that cannot be made better with the. W there is nothing that cannot be made better with the addition of ninjas. Ninja, American, oh, bro. American ninja, American bro. ninja. Come give me, Rob. Come on, come on. Awesome. Look. Awesome okay. stuff. Nice. The greatest. I still maintain that the greatest yeah. movie review I think I ever read was Joe okay. Bob Briggs' mo movie review for American Ninja. Nice. I mean. And then American Ninja 2, if this wasn't great enough, American Ninja 2, the confrontation, is about clone ninja super soldiers. <laughs> Do Sam we have Furstenberg? reversible cover artwork, Rob? For no, this? I look. There's no reversible okay. cover artwork. But first of all, this is Michael Dudikoff and Steve James, who was in the first movie. Steve James, who the late lamented Steve James, who was in To Live and Die in L.A. Steve James, one of the greatest actors of all time. He left us far too soon. He, of course, plays Curtis Jackson. I mean, first of all, I don't know what it is. Is there is there a more quintessential name for a black actor or black character than Curtis Jackson? I've never done the research, but he plays Curtis Jackson in this movie, and he's a ninja, and he's Steve James. And he kicks ass. I mean, yeah. he's. I mean, he's not Michael Dudikoff. I think they should have. If this movie were made now, Steve James would have been the American Ninja. He would have been the star, and Michael Dudikoff would have been the sidekick. Now, no, I'm, I'm not to take away from Michael Dudikoff, but Steve James, Steve James. Yeah. I mean, I have a thing for Steve James. I'll admit it. I have a man, man crush on Steve James. The guy's got an incredible body. Handsome guy. He left us too soon. But here's... He always wanted to show that, Rob. In every dude, <laughs> dude. I mean, these haven't come out yet. But I mean, yeah, come yeah. on. Kino Lorber put out Enter the Ninja. They put out The Confrontation. Uh, and now you got both the first uh, American from, Ninja from films. From their horizon, Rob, considering the movies. This is Kino Lorber once again bringing... I, I, I mean, can I just talk about how much I love Kino Lorber's output? Again, don't know how they afford it. Don't know how I don't know the I mean they're are they these are MGM titles so they they are licensing this stuff from MGM I don't know uh, you know what Amazon whatever your deal is you own the MGM library uh, Warner Brothers owns I don't know what I don't know wh who knows what but Canon Films made but, these a uh, Canon film yeah yeah and I'm gonna put these I mean I might have to make a special ninja shelf yeah you know because oh wait I think I've got it right here yeah in case uh, in case. We forget. Yeah. So let me just add this. I mean, this is a couple weeks ago, but come on. Franco Nero and Sho Kazuki in yeah. Enter the Ninja. And, of course, the John Frankenheimer film, The Challenge with Toshiro Mifune. Come on, man. This is Ninja Central here of all up in this. Nice trilogy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. 
And uh, so Kino Lorber, Kino Lorber also sent me this week a early Powell and Pressburger. Actually, it's just Michael Powell who made like the red shoes. This is a silent film he made that I've heard about, but I've never seen. Hey. The Edge of the World. Again, Kino Lorber dropping the ultimate. And Thelma Schoenmacher is all over this doing special features and audio commentary. That's Martin Scorsese's editor. I can't wait to delve into this. Once again, this is from 1920. 1920. Hey. Kino Lorber, again, this is chock-a-block full of special features. Edge of the World, and Martin Scorsese presents this. You know, he's he's he also rest- had was in charge of restoring the Red Shoes. Uh, again, DTS soundtrack. This comes from BFI, but Kino Lorber's putting it out here. So you go, Kino Lorber. They also sent me a great uh, documentary on Allen Ginsberg, uh, which is great that I realized I left. I left the Allen Ginsberg documentary. Um. So, uh, you know, our guest is going to come on soon, but I can hear us in our guest's audio. Yeah. So he's got a uh, – boy, it's, this is going to be fun. But anyway, so Dieter, that's my Kino Lorber. That was a little box I got of deliciousness to start with. What do you have? I have – I don't know if uh, you already shown it, Rob. I don't think so. I got, you know, the Rosemary's Baby with this nice, but you get. Thank God. Criterion cover Again, artwork. One, one of the worst. The, the, that Rosemary's Baby cover and the Exorcist cover, two of my favorite, favorite, call them horror films, uh, with terrible, terrible covers. Like, it's yeah. like Paramount That's and Warner lucky. Brothers. It's like the people at Paramount and Warner Brothers conspired together to give us <laughs> something that shitty. Um, can I say that? I mean, I don't mean to be totally, a douche, totally, but totally. shitty shitty is as shitty does. So, uh, the next one I bought as a schnäppchen, Rob. Uh, a price reduced 4K from Arrow from England. I haven't seen the movie, The Sisters Brothers. Oh, that's with, a good movie. Uh, John McRae and Jake. Uh, uh, no, River Phoenix, uh, Trucking Phoenix. So, we have a reversible cover artwork, and. We'll get a booklet with the movie. This was price reduced, so I thought, okay, I will snack that up. And the poster inside, which should be, I think. Oh, we have, look, this is cool. Wanted wanted posters, actually. So not, not just the covers artwork for the disc. So, the Sister Brothers, just put that back in. The next one, Rob, I think you showed way back. I waited for a price drop here, too. I got from Douglas Trumbull. Oh, so that's a great, that's a beautiful disc. Uh, that's a great disc. You got, yeah, you got the reversible sleeve. Yeah. Uh, the film the looks great. Sleeve. It also has the, the documentary that Chuck Barbie made, who was incidentally my cinematographer on Free Enterprise. Yeah. That documentary and the making of Silent Running is great. That's a great disc. Yeah. Why didn't you? And, why didn't you buy that when it first came out? Why are you waiting on that shit? Come on, son. You gotta uh, buy that '70s classic sci-fi right away. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't uh, sold out, Rob. <laughs> it was still available in, in the UK. All so right. I bought for a reduced price. Because you're a big Joan Baez fan. I bet you walk around the house singing the theme, theme song to Silent Running. Rob, I, ho- I, I think we don't have our cat in the back uh, stuff to put in. Cat in the back, 4K movie. Media book from Germany, the movie called Raven's Hollow. So, what is it? Back. Is it drama horror? Uh, it seems to be a folk folk horror. Rob. Oh, all right, folk horror. It's uh comes with the UK, uh, with the with the 4K and the Blu-ray, and it's limited to 555. The media book. It's How does anybody a, make any money on a 500? I, I don't get it. In 4K? I have no, no idea. Ravens Hollow. The next media book, 4K, 
changing English titles to German titles. When Harry met Sally, it's just here, Harry and Sally. So they just shortened it a little bit. So okay, wait, that's, 4K, a, that's in 4K? Exactly, exactly, Rob. That's a 4K. 4K media book, which came out God this week in... damn it, as you would say. Germany. So Blu-ray and the 4K from uh, Cape Light, Rob. Is there something so wrong with I, my face? Sorry, I love so that I movie. Would, so I would think, Rob, Considering Cape Light stuff is getting released internationally too, uh, or quite on the Western Front or something, so perhaps it will get an international release. I too. mean, that is what MGM, and if it's MGM, yeah. apparently everybody can license it. Kino Lorber's bringing us Ninjas. Uh, yeah. Cape Light's bringing us When Harry Met Sally. You know, Meg Ryan's directorial f- debut with the David David Duchovny. I forget the name of it. Why are we stuck with each other? Whatever yeah. the hell it is, I don't know. Can't wait to see that. So, um, first haul for me. First haul. Well, you know what? You know who we've got? We've got yep. a very special man, guest. Man himself. A very special guest. Uh, if you are on Twitter, X, Bill Hunt Bits. The man's been doing the digital bits for a quarter century. He's written a book on home video. He's also got two. Uh, he's started writing his own science fiction epic, a series of science fiction novels. And he's written the first book. And then he went back and wrote the prequel, which he's just finishing up. He can tell you more about that if he wants to. I'll just tee it up for him. But, I mean, I've read the first book. I read a version of the first book. It was excellent. So if you love things like The Expanse and For All Mankind, Bill Hunt's new sci-fi series is going to be a must-read. Hopefully, I think you should crowdfund a leather-bound slipcase edition that costs hundreds of dollars. I will buy it. And so should you. So uh, let's see if – well, he's here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls – Mr. Bill Hunt of the digitalbits.com. Now, Bill. Uh, can you guys hear me okay, first of all? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. good. Good. But we can hear ourselves. A, a slightly more interesting background here than my office, which is a disaster right now. <laughs> no, that's a great background, no, but great we, background. Can we can hear ourselves through yeah. your through thing. Your- Okay, let me uh, see if I can't uh, turn that down. Just bear with me while you guys are all going all over the place. Is that any better? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. No, it's yeah. a little louder. It's a little louder. Oh, it's a little louder. Okay. Uh, um, well, let's see. How is it better if I hold the uh, hold this? Well, I think it's because well, you, think it's do you have headphones? Do you have headphones? I don't, unfortunately. And these this is a Pixel phone, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't have. It. I can uh, <laughs> if you want, I can go get my laptop and try and do it that way. Could you do that? And we'll bring you back. We'll bring you back. Yeah, give me give me a couple minutes. No worries, dude. No worries. Okay, dude. back in. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll be we'll be waiting. We'll be waiting. We'll be waiting. We'll bring Bill back. We, yeah. We will go through the Super Chats that we got until we get. Oh, yeah. Super okay. Chats. We'll go for some Super Chats. Super Chatty. Uh, who's Super Chatty today? Let's see. Um, let me get in here and uh, let's find out. First of all, NJR1984 says... Regarding last week's question about my final Netflix envelope, I got Kajillionaire. I was getting discs since I moved to L.A. in 20, 2007. Luckily, Vidiots just opened down the street from me. Oh, the new Vidiots, is that an Echo Park? I mean, uh, in Eagle Rock? Is that where that is? Okay. That's pretty cool. Okay, that's interesting. You got Kajillionaire. Kajillionaire, it's his last movie. <laughs> that's your last movie. Uh, Irene Jobson said... Uh, she writes, let's pretend you could dress all of your peeps for Halloween and you get to choose their costumes. Name three people and pick their costumes. Uh, that's interesting. Well, Irene, you'd be the first, and I would probably dress you up in something Carla Cagino is wearing in the fall of the House of Usher. <laughs> How about that? Uh Something that would accentuate your your uh, exquisite bosoms, something tight and probably leathery, uh, maybe a superhero costume or Vampirella. I got Vampirella right behind me, so or right over there. Maybe you as Vampirella. That's how it start. Then probably um, I would probably uh, uh, who would I who would I go? Stubble McShave. 
I would dress up Stubble McShave as a character in um, from the World Beetle of Time Punk. series. I don't know what that would be, but that's what I would that's what I would do. And uh, let's see who else who else is there? Deets, um, mm. maybe Tom Junior Jackson. Yeah. I would I think I would dress Tom Junior Jackson as Merlin from Excalibur with the metal skull cap and give him give him the staff that has flames on it. So there you go. There's for our peeps. And and I would would uh say Adventure Square has to go as Matt Heidi. <laughs> Since he won won the media book. <laughs> All right, Adventure Square is Matt Heidi. I'll take it. Heidi. Yeah. Um well, let's go with that. Uh, you don't have any more. Anybody else? Um, let me just see. Perhaps if my neighbor is here from the Black Forest, Alt Metal is something metally. Perhaps Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> or if That's we have Wake as Robocop watching the show, he can come with his Robocop costume, of course. And uh, let me just see who's, who else we have here. I know a little bit. Of course, uh, my friend Tim Hens can come as some someone from Star Trek. Of course. All right, there you go. I like it. A yeah. uh, guy newbie says, "Have either yeah. of you listened to the new Atmos mix of Dark Side of the Moon for the 50th anniversary? It just arrived from Amazon today, and it's stunning. I have not got that yet. I want to get the super deluxe edition yeah. of that." Um, but yeah, the, the super, I should get the, I should be getting the new Dolby Atmos, the new Duran Duran Halloween record supposed to come out this week, which I pre-ordered. So I should hopefully get that this week. Um, uh, and I, we were, so, so I was up in Portland and we were able to go to my friend Clark Von Trotha's house. I went with Roberto Suarez and actually Roberto Suarez, we had dinner and we met his son. His son is, gives me hope for the future of humanity. I believe he's 14 years old. He's whip smart, and he already knows so much about movies. He was a joy to talk to. He should have his own YouTube show. That's all I can say. Um, but we went to my friend Clark's house, and we listened to some Dolby Atmos stuff. Uh, on Clark's system is a $90,000 home theater system, and the sound was some of the most stunning sound I've I've ever heard. It was inc- just absolutely incredible. And Roberto took a video that I'm going to play next week uh, on the show. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Um, uh, I only I, have, dropped, considering Dark Side of the Moon, uh, I think the Super Audio CD that has mm-hmm. come out. So I have not heard the Dolby Atmos mix. Yeah, I would love to. I want to hear that. Uh, Tom Jr. Jackson says that the 3D presentation of I, the Jury, is beautiful. Uh, and that's uh, good to hear. Uh, I haven't watched mine yet, but I have it. Um, a Vegas RoboCop wants to know is if anyone is yeah. refurbishing 3D televisions. That's a good question. Ooh. I don't know the answer no. to that. Uh, maybe we'll ask Bill Hunt. We'll table that for a minute, and we'll ask Bill Hunt this question. Yeah. Um, a World in Pajamas. Tracy, science, uh, science, lady. science lady, green eyed lady, says, I hope they make a fictional type movie about the making of Jaws. World got introduced to Spielberg, John William, lots of drama behind the scenes. Well, Carl Gottlieb, the writer of Jaws, wrote a great book on the making of Jaws called The Jaws Log that I would suggest reading. But yeah, they and then there is a play now. Yeah. Uh, the sh- I think it's The Shark Isn't Working, a play about Jaws, making Jaws. Something like that, uh, which I haven't seen. Um, but that's that's uh, it, the making of Jaws is a fascinating story because you know they're going to fire Spielberg every day, and David Brown, the producer, just said keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting, and the rest is history. History. Uh, our man Stubble McShave says Stubble. I've been checking. I've been checking out concert films and other live music. I rewatched The Last Waltz when Robbie Robertson passed away, and I learned in Robbie's memoir that George Lucas was in the running for The Last Waltz. Do you think there could be a streamer, a streaming only featuring live concerts? I think that is a capital idea. I would love that. And you know, one of the one of the great allures, this is gonna seem strange for from people to hear from me, I guess, but uh on Laserdisc, one of the things they used to do was release 
uh, operas. You know, you could Ooh, buy operas, okay. and I know that yeah. I think the Berlin Philharmonic. Yeah. Uh, like ten years ago, you could subscribe, and they streamed their their concerts. And okay. so there, there's like a whole Berlin Philharmonic app, which uh, you could you could use. Um, but okay. I think having, although I think that the music rights would be an issue, it'd probably be yeah. expensive. But there's so many great concerts. I would love to have an all concert channel. I think that's an amazing idea. Somebody will probably get around to doing it. it Stubble, goes on, Stubble goes on to say, are you still buying uh, music, physical media? I was really impressed by the new album from the Rolling Stones. I am too. Uh, I love that. That Lady Gaga song that Stevie Wonder plays on is a banger. It sounds like it's off of something from the 70s. It's so good. I never knew a group of octogenarians could rock out like that. It's a well-balanced album with both high-energy rock songs and more mellow tunes. Stubble is right. I mean, I don't think it's perfect, but the new Rolling yeah. St- it's called Hackney Diamonds, uh, is a great record. And 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 uh, uh, Mick Jagger's 80. Unbelievable. It might, it might be their last album, but they did say they recorded enough material to maybe have two albums, so they might be putting out another one, but... That new song, I forget. It's it's more of a ballad kind of a song, but with Lady yeah. Gaga is so good. I I love that song, and you know, hearing Stevie Wonder play on it, what a what a cool, uh, so cool. Uh, B Depp sends in a super chat and says, "I just want to say hi and support you, Robin Dietz. Also, a huge fan of the Bits and Bill Hunt. Actually, we DM'd and he talked me to go. He talked me into go blue." When we were still very much in the midst of the HD wars, D-D-D. yeah, the HD wars. Well, you know what? You know who can actually, uh, who can answer that? Uh, he's back, and I, let me just put him on the show. So I, I don't know if he heard that last one, but I will. Yep. Yeah. And and we're not we're not uh, echoing, which is great. Uh, if you could kick up your volume, maybe a little bit. Uh, let me let let me just get Bill. In the show, um, and I love that background, Bill. You are uh, so. I, I just want to say, when you go to Bill Hunt's house, not only does he have a great system, but when you look at his shelves, the man, because you know he gets promos, he has like thou ten. He's got he's got at least twenty five thousand discs. I swear to God. Please welcome <laughs> uh, science fiction author. A regular author on physical media, the the man who's brought us news about physical media for 25 years, one of the nicest people that I know on the planet Earth, uh, an animal lover, a lover of Space 1999, a lover of all good things in the world, Mr. Bill Hunt. Bill, welcome back to Let's Get Physical Media. It is great to have you, sir. Thanks, gentlemen. Good to be here, man. So, Bill, uh with with best buy leaving physical media and everybody you know we've been talking about the end of physical media forever yet at the same time i would say there's an embarrassment of riches coming at us in the 4k realm i mean look at look at that background look at bill's background can you imagine just being in a corridor full of movies he's got like the criterion well, it's closet so so <laughs> bill what is your what is your assessment of the state of physical media now, and how do you feel about all these new um, uh, new 4K releases? And by the way, I just wanted to say that B. Depp said he's a huge fan of the Bits and Bill Hunt and says that we actually DM'd, meaning you, Bill, you DM'd with him, and he talked me to go Blu-ray back when we were still very much in the midst of the HD wars so bill you you stirred you st- stirred you steered mr b Depp in the right direction outstanding well i'm glad to hear that it's it's funny because uh you know we have I mean, clearly we are past the peak of physical media right i mean the golden age of of discs was sort of in the early aughts into the into about 2009 2010 so we're you know we're clearly kind of past that but uh you know to me the, the idea that Best Buy is leaving physical media is almost irrelevant because how many people actually went to buy physical media at Best Buy? I mean, certainly they had mail order, you know, for steelbooks. steelbooks. 
Right, exactly. But I, I mean, for the last 10, 15 years, you go to Best Buy and they have almost nothing on their store shelves. So I, I, I don't know what, what a difference it makes. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about what it, the difference it might make from the studio side. But look, we've just seen a huge flurry that like in the week after Best Buy <laughs> announced, you know, we basically I revealed on the bits that Best Buy was going to be leaving uh, physical media. There's a flurry of orders, a flurry of announcements, major titles, right? And, you know, you have Titanic and, and, and a bunch of major titles get announced. And by the way, we haven't even seen the, the other James Cameron catalog titles get announced yet. And that is coming. That's coming in the next month sometime is you're going to you're going to see Disney and Fox are going to jo- are going to announce Aliens, True Lies and the Abyss for 4K. That's happening. That's going to happen. Like, I, you know, people are always like, well, yeah, sure. You've been saying that for years. Listen, I'm tracking. <laughs> I'm tracking these discs in production. It's happening. They're coming. Um, so it, you know, we're seeing major titles get announced, and and you know, next year looks looks pretty exciting in terms of the slate of titles we're going to see, or cattle 4K catalog, and and uh, God Lord knows, even look at the Blu-ray titles we've seen lately. We we just a couple days ago, the Expanse, the complete series, on Blu-ray. We've got Leave It to Beaver, the complete series on Blu-ray. The giant box set of of uh, uh, Doctor Who, the new Doctor Who. Could take from this, and it's something I'm going to talk about on the bits tomorrow. Is look, for this forget about this being a mass market pro- product. This is now a collector's market, and and as a studio, you should be ca- catering directly to collectors. You should be do, going, you know, making these discs special, doing all kinds of extras that are that are worthy of of what people want, you know, special packaging, do, you know, go all out. We're back to kind of the laser disc market, which was very much a collector's market. It was very yeah, much about totally. catering to the fans, to the diehard fans of discs, to the diehard fans of movies, to the diehard fans of physical media. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that kind of a market can exist at least through the end of the decade. Well, yeah. Also, the let me ask you about this. So we have all of these boutique labels, everything from whether it's eighty-eight films or one hundred and one films or Second Sight, my beloved Second Sight in the UK. You've you've got Imprint down in Australia. You've got Umbrella down in Australia, um, and Via Vision, uh, and all the different labels here. Whether it's Criterion, whether it's Shout, which is putting out. I mean, Shout's going to start putting out Oliver Stone movies from Warner Brothers. They already put out yeah. Natural Born Killers. They got, they got um, Alexander's coming. Alexander's coming. Uh, JFK. How do you feel? And then, as as Dieter points out, Cape Light and what? what Dieter, what did Coke turn into? Uh, play on, play on, play on. Yeah, play on. There, there's all these people putting out. Is that going to continue? Do you think, Bill? Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, it's smart for you know because the studios seem to the major studios seem to have the energy, the interest, the resources to do about you know fifteen to thirty discs a year, each of them. But then they can do a whole bunch of additional stuff if they if they license sub license it out to, to these indie indie labels. And there's nothing wrong with that because the indie labels can go out go a lot on extras. Um, yeah, I think you're going to see an awful lot of that in the in the year ahead. We've certainly seen a lot of that in the last year, and I think that's again that's back to laserdisc days. That's exactly the kind of thing that happened back in the laserdisc days. Is you had lots of lo- sort of boutique labels that were really catering to fans, Criterion, and uh, you know it, it's I think it's a I think it's a good time. I, I mean, look, it, it, we're probably past the time where this is a mass market product. I don't think there's anything any doubt about that. And even if you look at look disc sales overall. DVD still tends to dominate because it still dominates around the world. But uh, yeah, there's a pretty there's a pretty good market out there still. I mean, you know, every video game system continues to have a 4K player pretty much, you know, the Sony and the and and Microsoft game systems and in that this this generation of game systems is going to last about probably to the end of the decade. So the question will be will the next generation of those game systems continue to have a disk drive? Uh, but you know, look, I, I think we, I think we've got at least until the end of the decade for, to enjoy discs. And so what my, what I tell my readers is, look, if there's something you want, we're past the time where you should wait. Like if it, if it comes out, you should buy it because we don't know if, if 
there's going to be another super special version of this title or that title. It's not impossible, but you know, if a t- if a movie comes out and you want it in 4K, buy it. And sometimes you're going to get all of the extras that you had before on the on DVD and Blu-ray and sometimes you're not. And you know, look, you've still got your existing discs. So, you know, it, it you have we're at the point now where if you want it, buy it. So if it comes out in 4K and they do a nice job and it's a beautiful transfer, shoot, don't wait, man. Well, I have, okay, I have another question. Like, okay, here we have, and an Dieter, I'm kind of going through the news. I'm popping up things I was yeah. going to show during the news segments during this. But So Shout Factory is doing the Police Academy collection. Shout Select is doing the Police Academy selection, uh, the collection of all the Police Academy movies. Now, Bill, this is a Warner Brothers, uh, obviously Warner Brothers, a perennial the Police Academy movies are perennial, perennial Warner Brothers. That was a that was a Warner Brothers comedy franchise. I don't even know how many they've made. Yeah. But they're not even releasing. The studios are are licensing out more of their own. They're not putting out their own catalog anymore. Yeah. And I like when when Natural Born Killers, JFK, maybe not so much Alexander, but still, those are big Warner Brothers movies from a huge Oscar winning director. Right. And yet the studio's like, ah, we're not going to do it. You guys take it. And they're licensing. How? Why are they doing this? Well, a lot of it has to do with, I mean, some of it has to do with resources, right? So Warner Brothers has the resources and the personnel to do about 10 big catalog 4K titles a year. That's just kind of where they're at. They're, they, they, they're, they're slate. And I've seen, like a year ago, I, I had access to their slate for this year and it was about 10 titles and sure enough that's exactly what they've done and i and i've seen their slate for next year and and again it's about 10 12 titles so that seems to be what what they're doing and then they're going okay if there are opportunities beyond that we'll license out to criterion we'll license out to shout and i think you may see them do a little more more of that now paramount is an interesting case because paramount's doing a lot more titles themselves they're digging deep on their catalog and so they're putting out, I, I would guess, 15, 20 titles a year, maybe a little more. And they're, they're doing also, a lot of licensing to Kino, too. Exactly. And also to into imprint and to other. So so they're doing a lot. They're doing more themselves. Plus, they're also doing a lot more sub licensing. Now, the, the one that's frustrating to me is Disney. Disney is Disney has hardly done any in the last few years. They're starting to do a little bit more. Right. They're starting to kind of explore the idea of doing a little bit more, but they're also very, very risk adverse. (laughs) And and what I'm concerned about about with the Best Buy announcement with Disney is my understanding is the way the arrangement with a lot of the studios worked with Best Buy is Best Buy bought the whole allotment of discs. Like if if Disney produced or whatever studio produced 8000 copies, Disney or I mean, Best Buy just bought them all and just flat boom, bought them all. So, so that they, the studio would never have to worry about returns or getting product back, right, that didn't sell. But obviously that's going away. So the studio was guaranteed a, a chunk of money up front, and they knew that stuff would be profitable. So it's easier, it's easier to be, if you're risk adverse, it's easier to make that, that call. Now with Best Buy going away, we'll have to see what happens. I, the smart thing to me would be to go to Amazon because I, I think the, the bottom line is most people buy their discs on Amazon or yeah. a boutique retailer like, you know, like uh, uh, discount DVD or, you know, whatever deep discount o- other places like that. Um, and, you know, obviously shouts got their own store. And, and, and I know for a fact, there are a couple of studios that are thinking about now more seriously starting their own little online stores to directly cater to their market, which I think is brilliant. And I think that's exactly what they should do. I really think, honestly, the smart play for studios would be to start catering directly to fans, start communicating with them directly, interacting with them directly, build a business like Kino Lorber Studio Classics has done, build a business like Arrow, build a business like Shout and Scream. That's the way you, that's the way you do it. But, you know, the problem is, is we have a generation of, of, of people in charge in the home video divisions of these studios that is new to this. They're just new to this. They're not, they're new to the disc business. They don't have a lot of experience in the disc business because they've probably gotten their jobs during this kind of big digital push. 
So they just don't know what they don't know. And I'm hoping and I'm trying to encourage people to just, you know, look, Disney, if nothing else, like double down on Disney movie, Disney movie club. I mean, you can sell a ton of discs. You if you if you do good work and you pick good titles, you can sell a ton of discs in this market, especially on 4K, because there are there's a huge market out there that's way bigger, by the way, than the Laserdisc market ever was. There's a huge global market for fans who want their favorite movies in 4K. And and I think you're crazy to leave that money on the table. Well, how come in, in, in both, I think, Warner Brothers and Disney in their 100th anniversary have, I think, really dropped the ball? I don't know if you agree. I think they've really dropped the ball. Yeah. I can't believe that we haven't, we don't have a 4K of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Mary Poppins. Yeah. It, it, I mean, these are hugely significant titles in the history of the studio. 20,000 Leagues is not only, I think, one of the, could be the great... 20,000 Leagues and Mary Poppins could be considered the greatest live-action films ever to come out of Disney. Yeah. But 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is also one of the great fantasy films of all time. And if one movie would benefit, both of those movies actually would, would look phenomenal uh, with By a the Dolby way. Vision grade. There is a great 4K scan. There's a great 4K scan and restoration of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So they could absolutely do it. What? The, but the problem is this. The, there, are, there is a generation of executives at these studios that doesn't know about this stuff, that doesn't, have, that doesn't have any knowledge of this stuff, that doesn't have any investment in these titles. I mean, this, the Warner Brothers 100 like promotion, like some of their 100 box sets they don't have actual Warner Brothers titles. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's well, like, the the UK the UK division of Warner Brothers would not do that. They were not putting in. It, right. You're right. They have trailers with with clips from Wizard of Oz in 2001, and uh, it, it irks me to no end that they're showing. Yeah. I mean, I understand Warner Brothers acquired those titles in what the 80s yeah. from Turner and all that, but give me a break. You yeah, can't sit not, there and celebrate. They're not your movies. You didn't make them. And in the meantime, there are great Warner Brothers movies that they did make that they're not celebrating, right? As you say, it just it just makes no sense to me. And it's funny because I so I was, I, I, I half of what I do is talking to studios and finding out what's going on and kind of, I mean, kind of advising and consulting and, and that kind of thing. So I, I was asked recently to provide a list of titles by Disney that that I thought people would really be excited to own in 4k right so i was happy to do that i gave them a list of 50 films 25 a-list titles 25 b-list titles more cult titles but all of which would sell like hotcakes if they put them out on 4k and you know the reaction was was uh, i i i think i think positive but, you know, I can tell that there are executives at some of these studios that don't even know that they own some of these titles that just aren't even familiar with their catalog. And, and I mean, it's like right away, a, a title that, that Disney could put out that would sell instantly a ton of copies is Tombstone. Tombstone, like, but that's a Hollywood Pictures title. And, I, and how many of the people that are at the studio right now even are aware that they own that title? You know, it's like, th these are, this is the problem. It's It's very weird. It's, it's, you know, these people are well-meaning, but they just don't know what they don't know. And they don't have any experience in the, in, from, the, from the older days of DISC to, to have some history and know what sells. A lot of them are young and they don't, they're not familiar. They work at Disney or they work at Warner Brothers, but they don't really know what's in the catalog. And, and, it's, and it's crazy to me. I mean, it's crazy to me. Like, like, like the three of us, if we were in charge at one of these studios, we could make so much money for the studios because we know what people would buy and we would know how to, how to talk to the, to the audience and we'd know what features people want. And it would be a no brainer. I mean, it would be a no brainer. And, and I know that there are people at each of these studios who do know how to do that. But the problem is the decision makers and the people in charge just don't understand the market, the business, the catalog. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I do it facetiously, sort of, but not facetiously. <laughs> when I, I, I talk about that, I, you know, I really believe that corporate, the way people are hired in corporations now, I understand they have to have a certain educational pedigree, whether it's Ivy League educated business yeah. degrees. But it seems so strange to me, and we saw this happen. We saw all of these great people that were 
uh, ensconced at the studios who loved home video, who loved putting this stuff. Like, I, you know, Colleen Ben at Universal. Oh, yeah. Ronnie Sass. Ronnie Sass. I mean, people, people I got. People who understood the business, who built the disc business. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even even when I was at when I was working at Disney, people like David Jessen, you know, and, and John Bernstein. And, and these were people that really did love. They really loved what they were doing and they would get yeah. excited about special features and they really knew was or Paul Hemstreet who used to be at Warner Brothers. I mean, mm-hmm. these are people that really loved uh, home video and it seems so or movies in general. It seems so odd to me that the studios are hiring people that literally don't know. Uh, yeah. About movies. Look, it, if you're up for a job at Disney, the first question you should be asked is what, what are your favorite? What Give, give me a list of your 10 favorite Disney movies and tell me why. And if you can't answer that question, you have no business working at that company as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. Right? I mean, it, that's a no-brainer. You should be able to talk about movies that you love. You should have some working knowledge of the catalog. You should have some passion for movies. Not just mo- new movies, not just Marvel and whatever, but like older movies. You should have some love of and knowledge of older movies. Because that's a huge untapped resource that that you know that disney especially is not really tapping into at all and i i don't understand and that's a company that invented the home video business basically they were right on the forefront of that and i i mean and i will say i'm really encouraged by what they've done lately because if you look at like for example uh cinderella and snow white in 4k they're gorgeous they're gorgeous transfers. They, they actually have gone back and properly rescanned them and they've got grain and they look like film and they are beautiful. And right? the packaging, uh, this is one of the things, Dieter, this is one of the things I bought yep. for this week. This is a stunning release. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Stunning. Stunning, yeah. stunning, stunning. So Even Snow if White. You blow it up yes. on a huge screen, it looks gorgeous. It looks exactly the way it should. And, you know, obviously they did Prey in 4K. They've, they're doing some of these Disney Plus streaming Something shows else 4K. I have this week. I found Ooh, out my nice. Prey yeah. disc. Not the which steel is, book, but I got the uh, Prey. Which looks really, really good. And, you know, obviously they're doing the James Cameron titles. And I can tell you, they're going to look great. And they're going to sound great. And they're being done well. They're all going to be released on 100 gig discs. Like, they are, they're doing them right. So, like, I'm really encouraged by what I've seen in the last few months and what I see coming ahead for the next, you know, the next four or five months. But what I'm really hoping is beyond that, they really like I'm, I'm hoping they make a ton of money from these Cameron titles and these Disney animated titles. And I am hoping the message they get is, oh, we can make a lot of money if we do this right. You know, because they don't understand. They don't under they don't understand why. Well, why would we do Dolby Vision? Why would we do? They, they've only recently figured out, oh, I see people really want 100 gig discs to make the make sure the quality is is really good. Right. It's it, you know, it's like they're they're having to relearn the, the stuff that was, you know, that was already figured out 10, 15 years ago. But I'm, I'm but I'm hopeful, you know, I, and I'm, I'm I'm hopeful that going ahead look, based on the announcements we've seen, based on things I know are coming that I can't even talk about yet. Like, I'm excited. But but my message to to people who are fans of discs is man don't wait don't wait if you see an opportunity to buy something that you have wanted don't hesitate because we've got to keep this you know collectors have got to step up and support this market or it will go away well uh alexander wilson asks an interesting question he uh, he says in disney's recent sec filing where they reorganized the company to get rid of the chapek media distribution division in the home, but the home entertainment line is going to hit a billion dollars in revenue this year. Do you have any thoughts about that? Well, I think it's I I think it's I think it's a good thing. I, I, so, I, but the problem is that there's that there's still what I'm hearing is that there's a lot of still a lot of confusion at Disney because there are people who the reorganization has has been good in some ways, but it's also been bad in some ways because now the you know the 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 people who make the decisions are here. But now the people who used to be over here are now underneath here. And then there are people down here. And so you have all of these levels of, of people who you have a really funky chain of command and they're not all talking to each other and they're not all on the same page. And what really needs to happen is that chain needs to be streamlined 
And there are a lot of people down here on the lower level who really know what to do and how to do it, but they, but they're waiting to be unleashed because the people up here are still kind of, uh, I don't know, you know, it's stuff like that. So, so, but yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, a billion dollars, I'm not surprised that, that, that there's like, there's revenue to be made. And by the way, they're going to, I think they're going to look at the sales of Snow White and Cinderella and Prey and the, com- the upcoming Cameron titles. And by the way, Titanic, which is their title internationally in which they were involved on in terms. Their gig disc is Atmos audio. Like, and, and, I, and I've been told that the, the, the image presentation is, is is well done it's not scrubbed with scrubbed of grain it like it, it's going to look correct so i you know i'm hoping that they're going to make a ton of money and realize oh maybe we should have been doing this all along but uh, who knows like it's just it's i mean but uh, all that said the steps all the steps i'm seeing are in the right direction right now and that should that is good and that should be encouraged and as as fans of these discs you should buy the people should buy these discs that's how you that's how you tell them hey you're doing a good job this is what we want more of is you buy these discs buy snow white buy cinderella buy titanic buy prey buy the mandalorian buy loki buy wandavision buy the upcoming you know when they come out finally the abyss true lies uh, aliens, buy them, buy them. I think everybody, you know, collectors. And when you look at the actual, like, I'm always surprised at how high up those 4K uh, catalog title releases sell. They're always okay. at the top. You know, people are always going going for that. And I think that anybody who's anybody who has 4K, I think, is buying discs because it's a collector's format. There's no if you there's no reason for you to have 4K unless you're going to be buying 4K discs because you need a 4K TV, you need a 4K audio system. You know, you need all of those things. So, so are you optimistic then about the future of home home video? And are you optimistic about our 4K about what we're going to be getting? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I am. I have to say, I mean, I think the lesson of the pandemic has been, oh wow. Our theatrical business isn't doing so well, but look, we can still make some money on discs. And and I, I think if, if 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 studios do them right, I think, yeah, I think there's absolutely money to be made. And I think if the studios take the right message and figure out a way to streamline their process, focus on releasing great titles with great extras and great quality and target directly stop going to the soccer moms and the the you know the the shopping mall crowd and the just aim your aim your scope right at at collectors and fans of these films because as you said nobody's nobody's buying 4k if you're not a diehard fan i mean because most people you know the average person can't tell the difference between blu-ray and 4k anyway so you, nobody's buying 4K that isn't a diehard fan and doesn't want lots of movies in 4K. Target target that audience, man. And if you target that audience, what's going to happen is you're going to scan lots of your catalog in 4K that you can then, if you want to reissue on Blu-ray, if you want to put it on digital on the streaming service, great, you can do that. But if you target the high-end diehard fan, y- there's money to be made there. There's a ton of money to be made there still. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, man. I mean, I, I think we've seen a bounty of discs and I can't wait. I can't wait to see the reaction. Cause I look at these Cameron titles. I've been covering this since 2012 when we <laughs> first heard rumors that like, I, so, I mean, it wasn't even, it wasn't, let me, let me correct this. It wasn't a rumor. Like, like Fox was going to release the abyss and true lies on Blu-ray. They were going to do it. And they were, they prepared discs. They prepared the, the everything. And there was some kind of pissing match between Cameron and, and Fox. And, and I was at public event. I, I privately, I would ask them and they would tell me, well, talk to the other guy. And at a public, at a public industry conference in, in like 2014, I, but we're both Cameron and the head of Fox were on stage. I said, so what's up with the and true lies on Blu-ray and Cameron pointed at <laughs> the Fox guy, the Fox guy <laughs> pointed at Cameron, ask him. So there was some kind of pissing match and, and, and the whole thing got held up, but, but they are coming. Finally, they, the, the films have been scanned in 4k beautiful. They, they're, they're doing beautiful work. They're going to be on hundred gig discs. 
Um, they're going to have the features, I think, in terms of the AV features, I think people want. Uh, they are going to have, Abyss is going to have both versions of the film. And I'm told that Aliens is going to have both versions of the film, too. Um, so these are going to be good looking discs and it's, and, and, and the packages should include a Blu-ray version as well. There should be a Blu-ray version as well. So, yeah. you know, so people have been waiting for the last format to catch up on these titles should be happy to. So, you know, that there's a lot of reason to be excited, man. I, I'm certainly excited by a lot of this. Well, yeah. And then we're still, obviously we've got Oppenheimer, um, the, the Oppenheimer disc was, in fact, announced uh, this week. Yep. So, um, which is very cool. And uh, we've got a lot of, like, as we were saying earlier, the, the color purple was announced. Uh, and I think this, to me, this is, if you're going to redo the cover and not use the key art, this is the kind of, uh, of way to go. Elegant, yeah. beautiful, captures the essence of the movie. Really well done, really well thought through. So, yeah, no, and, and, and there's all kinds of the, you know, the deep catalog stuff is coming too. Look, Kino Lorber Studio Classics is putting out Fear and Desire, Stanley Kubrick's Fear and Desire in 4K, and that release is also going to have the Seafarers and the Flying Padre and or, well, like the other stuff too, the other early stuff also in 4K. So, go figure the only 4K Kubricks that we're not going to have are are from Warner Brothers. It's 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 Barry Lyndon and it's and it's Eyes Wide Shut. It's like I mean, you know, it's crazy. These indies are killing it. I think those will probably come to Criterion. Cuz there's I've heard that there's a Warner Brothers title that I really want in 4K that's yeah. going to Criterion. Well, Barry Lyndon would be a perfect perfect title. For Warner uh, Brothers to do, or for Criterion to do in 4K. Yeah, well, that's another thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about um, in terms of, uh, like, Criterion. You know, uh, they announced they have a banger January. We're getting yeah. Train Spotting in 4K. We're getting Blood Simple in 4K. We're getting the Apu Trilogy uh, in yeah. 4K, which, you know... Um, uh, if staples of film schools everywhere, Saji Ray's the Apu trilogy. If you haven't seen this, one of the most famous trilogy of films from India ever, um, coming out in 4K. And again, you know, Criterion killing it, killing it. So. Well, and they just they just recently put out Dreams, Akira Kurosawa's Dreams in 4K. I well, my I mean, for years the thing that I was uh, just obsessed about getting was a. Uh, a, a box set of the Zadoichi films and then Criterion delivered that amazing box set of all the Zadoichi films. <laughs> and so now what I'm really, really like my, my ultimate Holy grail title would be a, a Blu-ray and 4k upgrade of the AK 100 box set, the Kurosawa box set, like with all of the Kurosawa titles. Uh, I, I'd love to get in because, because by the way, a lot of the big ones are, have already been scanned in Japan. Like, they're coming out in 4K in Japan, but the problem is there's no English subs. So it's it's definitely doable, but that's, you know, AK, AK-100 and 4K plus Blu-ray for some of the deeper titles. That's what I want. Dieter, did you have something you want to say? Uh, Rob, we had that super chat to ask Bill about a 3D TV from uh, Vegas. Yes. So that we had a, somebody was asking, is there a place if your 3D TV dies? a place where you can have your TV refurbished to bring it back to life? Um, that's tough. Like, so the best thing to do, I mean, there are shops that refurb. What you might do is check with your manufacturer, right? Wherever the manufacturer is, do they recommend service centers and, and specifically that would have parts for your set? Um, you can go that way. And that's, that's probably the best way to go. If you can afford it, my recommendation would be to go to a projector because because the new HD and 4K projectors, well, in fact, most HD and 4K projectors for the last even 10 years all do 3D, um, which means you'll have to, you know, obviously you have to get new glasses that work with the projector, but, but almost all projectors support, home theater projectors support 3D. So now that obviously is an investment of money because you've got to get a projector, yeah. you've got to be able to mount it, you need a screen, all, all of that. 
Um, but if you're into 3D, the, the, that space, the projection space, re still really caters to that market. I, so I think 3D might make a comeback eventually um, because every manufacturer has been working on something called auto stereoscopic. Um, every display manufacturer has been working on auto stereoscopic technology, which is basically 3D without glasses. You just get a 3D effect actually in the display. And, and every year for years, when I would go to CES, there would be some demonstration of what that technology was like and how it was progressing. The problem is the, to do it, it requires a lot of processing power, a lot of little CPUs, computer chips. You have to, my understanding is you have to have a, a, a dedicated processor for every like five degrees of the screen, Ooh. which requires a lot of process. It's a lot of processing power. So, and, you know, during the pandemic, obviously the seat, there was a massive CPU shortage. So everything just kind of shut down. Um, but I think you could see again in the future, you know, you could see a, 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 them, the, the industry try to do that once that technology is ready. And the beauty of that is all of your old Blu-ray 3D discs should still be compatible with any new display technology. That, that's what actually I wanted to ask about. Yeah. If, yeah. If you yes, should be able to. Yeah, you should. It should be able to as long as long as you've got left eye, right eye. The TV should be able to interpret that information and give you, give you a 3D effect. But I mean, I don't know when that is. I, for a while, I, I was saying, you know, maybe maybe around closer to the end of the decade. But this that was kind of before the 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 uh, the pandemic and before the the processor shortage. shortage. And but it, I, I think it could happen eventually because it makes a lot of sense. Because uh, not just movies, but you know, people sports and all kinds of things. I think it, I think that will be a technology that the TV manufacturers are going to want to try again when it's ready. But, but it's kind of like, you know, when I, well, I mean, you guys too, probably like in the 1980s, I saw the first demonstration of HDTV at the Minnesota fair in like 1985. And it looked amazing. And I'm thinking, oh, this is fantastic. It's coming, right? And then it was another <laughs> right 20 around years. The corner. <laughs> yeah, it was 20 years before before the format actually really launched as a consumer product. So, but that's, you know, that's probably in the future at some point. Right. Well, you know. Um, yeah. It's, so, it's a fascinating time, man. It's a fascinating time. So what, for, from what you know, what are some of your grail titles that you would like to see come out what are what if you could like i know that look i want Patton in 4k there's so yeah. many things in the fox library obviously that i would love to oh, see yeah. in 4k that we don't have yeah some of my grail titles would be like master and commander and kingdom of heaven in 4k tombstone in 4k um i'd love to see open range in 4k uh i'd like to see a lot more classic you know classic disney stuff um I'd like to see, you know, Warner Brothers has got like Forbidden Planet and King Kong and Excalibur. And, you know, I'd love to see Speed Racer. We've talked about this many times. I'd love to see the Wachowski Speed Racer in 4K. Um, with with uh, lossless audio. Yeah, with a proper, at, with, with, yeah, exactly. With lossless, lossless or, or a proper Atmos remix. Um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of TV stuff that I think would be would be interesting. Um I mean, and, and there, I, and I have some favorite shows. Like one, like t my favorite, two of my favorite shows right now are on Apple TV Plus. I'm a huge science fiction fan, as you guys know, and um, I think two of the best science fiction shows ever are happening right now on Apple TV Plus in Foundation and For All Mankind. And I would love to see both of those shows released on, on 4K eventually. I'd love to see Star Trek Picard. Uh, season three released in 4k i'd pay well, money for that I, I don't know you know i was talking to terry and he said that people wouldn't want an upgrade but they're releasing strange new worlds in 4k yep. yeah i mean so the so apparently strange new worlds is actually finished natively in 4k but i would pay for a 4k because look they they can up they can up certainly up sample a picard which will would but but not it's not just the up sampling and the resolution you'll also get the deeper color You'll get high dynamic range, and that'll certainly benefit Picard. I, I'd pay for that. I'd absolutely buy that. Buy that in 4K. There's this kind of misunderstanding that well, if it wasn't finished in 4K, it won't look good in 4K. But that's rubbish because upsampling now is so good. I mean, and a perfect example of this is is uh, Game of Thrones. The first two seasons of Game of Thrones were only finished in very low, like it's it's barely HD resolution. 
but go go and take a look at Game of Thrones season one and two in 4K. It, there is a there is a notable difference in 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 quality, and you're also getting that deeper production. Like because productions typically work in about 16 bit color, right? So you're going to get better color. The upsampling is going to give you a, a, a sharper picture. Plus, you'll get high dynamic range. It it really makes a difference. I, I and I think even on titles that weren't necessarily finished originally that way it, it absolutely can make a difference uh, that makes me i've never bought the 4ks of game of thrones because i have my beautiful wooden box set but now i have to go get them. oh dude go to uh, when you get them take a look compare the blu-ray of game of thrones season one just watch the first episode and then look at look at it in 4k it's it's kind of shocking i wrote at the, at the time i wrote a review and i said this is i had no expectation that this was going to be as good as it was and it really was Upsampling technology has really, really gotten good, and 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 you can and it and again you can take advantage of all of that deeper color that was actually shot in the original master, so it it really can make a big difference. And uh, so, look, the bottom line is, if you have a favorite film, I mean, uh, it, now it, it, now's the time, man. It's like I, I I'll, I'll buy those all those things in in 4K while I can, and I think a um, lot of people feel the same. Danzig 1979 wants to ask, since we were talking Cameron, what about getting T2 remastered? <laughs> so, okay, so I I know a little bit that I can't talk about, but what I can say is that that after Abyss, True Lies, and Aliens come out, that 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 Lightstorm and Cameron are going to turn their attention to some of the other titles. I don't know if they're going to get to the really deep stuff. Um, the Solaris and, and uh, what's the other one? Strange there? Days and... Um, Strange Days, right. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to get to those, maybe, but I think, I think, uh, I, I believe the original Terminator has an anniversary next year. Uh, it does, so, 40. Uh, yeah, so, right. So I think, I think you will see Lightstorm turn its attention to those titles. And, and I know for a fact that Lightstorm is aware that that Studio Canal 4K was, was god-awful. And I've heard through the grapevine that Studio Canal is kind of now <laughs> sort of finally admitted that, yeah, they're not saying it publicly, but yeah, they kind of are aware that it needs to be fixed. So we'll see. So I think there's a good chance for those titles next year. Well, listen, you've, you've been here for an hour. I very much appreciate you giving us your insight. Now, if you could tell the folks at home, tell us about uh, your books. Oh yeah. So, uh, I am work. So I've been, I, when I mean, I've been, I've said this before, I'm working on a series of science fiction books and I finished the first one. Um, and it's really interesting. So everybody who's read it really likes it. And I pitched it around to some of the different, to just agents and different publishers and stuff. And the reaction is been very positive. Like everybody says, wow, okay, you could, this is good. This is, you can write, this is great. But I, but the but the publishing market is in a weird place right now, where I think you know a, a, a middle aged white <laughs> white guy like me <laughs> is not necessarily the demo that they're looking for in terms mm. of you know in terms of publishing talent, which is fine. Like that's totally I get it. That's totally fine. Um, and there's also a, a, you no know, nobody wants to take a risk on an unknown writer. And I've I've certainly written a book before, but it was a nonfiction book that sold really well back. You know, a DVD book. But, uh, but, you know, so you have to kind of prove to to publishers that you have an audience that will buy your book. So uh, a mutual friend of ours, after I wrote that first book, a mutual friend of ours said, you know, what you should do is if you have a shorter story that in this universe that you want to tell, uh, write that shorter story as like a novella um, and then and then do it as a Kickstarter and and, you know, create self -pub kind of self-published versions or small batch versions do a Kickstarter and have like a really nice print version with artwork and signed and all that jazz and see how many units you can sell. Because if you can sit and, you know, but obviously with the digital bits and, 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 you know, various other avenues, you know, I'm hoping I can, I'm hoping I can it, it, sell enough copies that, that the publisher then will go, Oh, okay. I see. You've got it on. We don't have to do anything and, and you can, you, you know, you can already sell like, you know, 5,000, 10,000 copies. Okay. That's then, then a publisher gets more interested and more serious, but, but I know everybody who's read it loves it. And, and I'm really pleased with it. And it's, it's something i I did just to kind of keep sane through the pandemic and given all the politics of the last few years and, 
you know, I just, I, and I've, I've spent so many years um, studying film and breaking down film and analyzing film and reviewing other people's films. And Rob, you and I have worked on some things and I just thought, okay, I, 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 I've got a story that I want to tell. And it's a science fiction story about space flight and the future of hum humanity in space. And, uh, and I just, I couldn't, it was burning a hole in my brain and I had to get it down and I finally have, and I'm almost done now with the second one. So as soon as I'm finished with the second one, I'm going to, I'm going to do a, I'm going to probably do the, do a Kickstarter and do and launch the first one. And then hopefully, you know, be able to launch the second one and go even further. Well, we'll definitely have you come on the show to promote that because I think, I mean, I haven't read the, the prequel book. I've read an earlier version of your first book yeah. and I loved it. You know, I mean, yeah. it, it's it's right up my alley, and, and obviously the writing is great, so I'm looking forward to that. And I think in this day and age, to wait for publishers and things like that, you could grow old and die. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and as we've seen, I mean, as we've been talking about for the last hour, the home video market, things are just changing. And there's a, there, there, in terms of entertainment and media and, and, and in general, nobody knows what they're doing anymore. Like nobody seems to know what they're doing and nobody seems to know what direction we should go. And there's a, there's a lot of risk adversity. And, and so I think you, you know, now look, we've got the opportunity now with, with all the technology we have to self publish and to self, to create your own things and put them out into the world. And, and uh, yeah. So, I mean, look, I, if nothing else, I, I wrote these for me and I, I and, and they've meant a lot to me and they've kind of saved my sanity over the last uh <laughs> over the last 10 years. And I'm really proud of them. I'm really, and, I, and I've written a lot of things over the years that nobody, I, you know, I did it for about 10 years. Uh, some friends who uh, work in the business. Well, and Rob, you and I did a couple things too. I was involved for about 10 years in various kinds of projects, developing things and pitching things animated. I, you know, I was a part of a, an animated project at cartoon network for a little while. It was in development. And for like 10 years, I did this. And I wrote all of this stuff that I'm really, really proud of that nobody ever got to see. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why I just finally said, okay, I, I'm going to have to write. I, I just need to write a book and put it out into the world so people can, because I've been a writer my entire career and hardly anybody knows that other than the DVD writing that I do on the bits. Well, listen, Bill, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing this hour with us here on Let's Get Physical Media. And um, it's always great to have you. Great to see you. And yeah, say hi to thanks, your wife, guys. Sarah. Absolutely, and Dieter. Dieter, it's good to see you, man. You too, and thanks for uh, reviewing Undefeatable on the digital bits. <laughs> Finally, some good stuff on that side. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it so bad that it's actually insanely good? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. Is is it's like there's some there's an audience for everything, man, and it's like yeah. we, we try to. We try to review a lot of deep cut stuff in addition to more mainstream yeah. stuff because because why not, man? Exactly. It was nice to see see that Good. title popping up on the digital bits. Uh, by the way, the digitalbits.com, everyone. You can find Bill writing almost every day about the recent developments in physical media and uh I like your uh, when you've also got a lot of great retrospective articles and and things. Mike Michael's articles that he does. Michael Coat, yeah, we well, look, we've been doing it for uh, God. It's going to be 26 years now. Going, uh, going into in December, it'll be 26 years we've been doing it. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to keep it, kind of trying to keep it interesting, and trying to cover, cover not just review things, but cover the business and and uh, provide insights that really, like, it's interesting. I, I'm in a unique position because I've been obviously editor of the bits for 26 years, but I've been in this industry for 30. So I I know everybody. I mean, I, I like, you know, I hear about everything. I mean, there's very little that's that's coming in terms of titles that are being worked on that, like, I don't hear about in one way or another. And a lot of it I can't talk about necessarily, but some of it I can. And so, you know, like the Cameron stuff, I've been tracking that for a while. And the Best Buy news, like, we broke that on the bits, which caused the site to almost shut down. We got so much traffic, <laughs> but I mean, it's like, it just like I have access to, I hear things because everybody who works in this industry, people read the website and I'll, I know a lot of these people and they, and they trust me with insights and, and stuff. So it's, you know, that's kind of my gut. The whole guide is to just, my, my whole kind of purpose is I'm just trying to promote this industry and, and promote this format these formats that we love right because that's it's really about like the love of all this stuff i'm i'm a fan and a collector as much as anything else and i've 
even though I've been an industry professional now for 30 plus years, I mean, I, like you guys, I, I, I'm passionate about this stuff. I want more great content on disc. So that's kind of the, you know, just kind of keeping the light, keeping the torch burning for physical media, man, and trying to keep people informed. Well, it's always and great I read to see. Someone, someone, someone was bragging about owning their tune set in an article. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was just recently. And by the way, I'm so glad to see that Play On now is going to be releasing kind of re-releasing yeah. like a wide release Thanks. version of with all yeah. of that great content. That exactly. I guess it now just comes without, out in March. Just without the swag as you written on your on your article yeah but it, it's oh, gotten delayed till next year probably because i don't know if it's manufacturing issues or just because dune 2 got pushed oh that could that makes sense no. too i know look no. i know that all the manufacturing is like strained to the gills right now because you've got all these major titles coming out and and uh a similar situation is probably the case with these Cameron titles. I think they might have, they would already have been announced by now, but like Disney is, you know, they're working hard to get it done. And then everybody's trying to replicate titles for the fourth quarter right now. So, so there's a little bit of that going on in the industry, but, uh, but yeah, there's, I mean, look, there's great stuff coming, man. There's, there's a lot of great stuff still coming by the way, next year we're going to see from Warner brothers. We're going to see gravity. We're going to see seven. Finally. Like there's good awesome. stuff coming. Yeah. Uh, before you go, uh, 200 Watt Studio says, "Remember the magazine, The Perfect Vision." I found a bunch in my basement the other day. I used to love The Perfect Vision. Yeah, uh, I love. You know, I I was a magazine junkie, and uh, I would buy. I used to spend a hundred dollars a week on magazines. Oh my god! In the first couple, two, three years of the digital bits, I wrote for widescreen review magazine at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I was just going through my closet and I've got a stack like of old issues of widescreen review that I, I wrote a column called In inside DVD that was about like what's coming to DVD, the DVD format and stuff. And I did that for two or three years, man. It's, it's yeah. The mag I miss my, I miss those great magazines. I know I, I have, I was thinking about that the other day. Like I haven't bought a magazine in forever. Oh yeah. But when we were younger, when we were teenagers, there was Omni and there was, Starlog and Cinemagic and Cinefx and there was all these there were all these great Cinefantastique Cinefantastique Fangoria oh, you know so, yeah, yeah. but well Bill Hunt thank you so much for being here and absolutely um, we will let you go sounds good all right man cheers boys thanks a lot take care well there you go uh, the great Bill Hunt here it was great to have him and uh, that is what we can bring you. Uh, all the time here at Let's Get Physical Media. Thanks for Bill to come on. Dieter, that was and illuminating. Speaking, yeah. And speaking of magazines, Rob, at Saturday, I went to the post office because I had to pick up a package, pay some customs. And before that, I had a little bit of time and I went to go to the magazine store, Rob, and I bought a magazine that I not buying this often anymore, considering hardware stuff, Rob. And they had a new UHD Blu-ray player in it. Ooh. From Magna... Mag, what is the company? Magnetars. And it looks insane, Rob, but it's really, really expensive. Here it is, Rob. Yeah, the big, well, the big brother. Now, what is what is really expensive? 3,000 euros, which would be about $3,500. But it weighs, it weighs 15, 15 kilos, Rob. But see, that's what I want to do, is I want to buy something yeah. like that and put one, actually buy two of them. Use one of them and put one away for a rainy day. <laughs> and, and Rob, it's code-free from the get-go, considering Blu-rays. You know? And Gotta from, like the, from the optic, it, it really looks, it looks great. But they say the the slide is a little bit cheap, but unfortunately, you sh it seems you can't get any other anymore. Dude, we're beggars. We can't it. be choosers. It's like, yeah. please, sir, <laughs> please give me but a I nice the... 4K disc player. Please. Yeah, but I saw the magazine and I thought, I have to get that magazine to see what, what is up with this UHD Blu-ray player. Uh, by the way, Roberto Suarez writes in and says, Rob, yep. it was so fun to see you this last weekend. Felix and I have an idea for a segment for the channel. I'll run it by you next time we chat. Also, don't forget to check out Scavenger's Reign on Max. 
Hopefully, it'll get a 4K release in the future. Have you heard about this? No. Scavenger's Reign is a new animated adult science, not adult like bump, chicka, bum, bum, but a very sophisticated yeah. science fiction show that was based on a short okay. film. And I saw a trailer for it like last week or something, and it kind of came out of nowhere. And I'm like, what is this? So that's pretty dope, dude. I'm very excited about this. Scavenger's is Reign. Is it out already? Yeah, it's out. You can watch it. Okay. And it's supposed to be hardcore sci-fi animated. It looks great. Right. So uh, should we show? I mean, obviously, I showed yeah. uh, a show that I did. Are we through with all the super chats, Rob? Did yeah, we're caught up. Okay. So if you want to fire super chats in, you can. We're caught up. But I did show, obviously, that I got these two. Yeah, I got Prey nice. and Snow White. Both of these discs are great. Uh, the Snow White, I love the cover. You know, everything about it's great. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. For me, while you know Snow White is not my casual bill of fare, uh, I do think like this is the first a American animated feature. It's really it's a beautiful film. This this is the best version of it we've ever received. So you got to have this in your collection, I think. Yeah. And then Prey is dope. Prey, awesome. Oops. I just Oops. It. But um, so yeah, I figured I'd show a few more uh, yeah. things, and and one of the. So these are 4K. One of the things I wanted to show, speaking of Roberto Suarez, Roberto gave me uh, this Blu-ray of Satan Tango. Now, this is something, I've never seen this movie. It's directed by Bella Tarr. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have been remiss, but this comes to us from Arbello's Films. Arbello's Films is a, a, a company we don't talk about really on this yeah. channel but they are a distributor of some really interesting stuff from our cinematic present and cinematic past but they also have um they put out blu-rays now a lot okay. of people like spike jones is a big fan of this movie uh this movie by the way is let me let me let me get this correct hang on yeah because you're not going to believe this this movie is let's see if i can go to its page so this is a two disc set it's a 4k restoration from the original 35 millimeter negative it has a new video interview with the one of the actors in it it has a video essay on it um this film actually this is the thing that strikes me as i look yeah it's seven hours long Double, double, double the runtime of Killers of the Flower Moon. Are you insane? So I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm just telling you. But Arbelos, A-R-B-E-L-O-S. You might want to go check the, them out. So Roberto Suarez was talking to me about this, picked this up for me, gave this to me as a gift. He also gave me a whole bag of cinnamon saltwater taffy from Bruce's Ooh. Candy Kitchen in Cannon Beach, Oregon, my favorite candy of all time. So thank you for this, Roberto. And definitely something to pick up so that came and then um uh for me a couple other things i i did pick yeah. up uh i i did get this i had to get this because i do have the do you know what this is uh i remember it but help me out Rob. friday the 13th yes <laughs> yes yeah. it's the it's the <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth. So I have the Friday the Thirteenth box set. Yeah. But and but I figured. But wasn't wasn't uh, the first one was not in four K. No. Something something like that. No, it was not. So this is the the O ring, and then this is the four K steelbook of the original Ooh, Friday nice. the Thirteenth. Yeah. Killer mommy, nice. killer! Mm -hmm. Don't let her get away, mommy. And, you know, cool O-ring. Uh, I figured, you know, yeah. why not? I'll never have to buy anything Friday the 13th again in my life. I mean, I don't care about the other movies if they came out in 4K enough because I've already got that cool box set. So, had to yeah. get that. Um, nice. And you know what else the I got? The one that started it all. The one that started it all. You know what else I got in terms of I loved, I don't know, I love this movie. The transfer yeah. for it's great, but I never got this steel book. And like Ghostbusters, Sony re-released mm -hmm. the steel book of the Step fifth element. Yeah. Ooh, nice. And I love nice. this artwork. It's you know, yeah. it's it's it looks like Mobius or something. Um yeah. 
love this, so I picked up this steelbook. And so I got that. A title that we have bought very often. Dude, I bought this movie so many times, I didn't even know. I'm never buying this movie again. What are you going to yeah. do? But that's Even if it, in the DVD day, days, it was a great disc. Oh, yeah. It was, it was great. I think in the Laserdisc yeah. days, it was great, too. Um, so I bought those. I still got some more stuff to show, but uh, yeah, I picked those up. Okay. Uh, then I show the rest of my stuff, Rob. Yeah. Okay. The first one, I stumbled across a review on Blu-ray.com. And it's a nice segue, considering you are Friday the 13th, Rob. The Indonesian movie Srigala from 1981, which some call a little bit of a Friday the 13th ripoff, which is true to some extent, but not really. Because considering Friday the 13th, I don't think you get a motorboat chase in it or a <laughs> karate girl cat fight in it. So it has some similarities, but there's other stuff in it too. And I was really surprised, Rob, considering how good the movie actually looks. Wasn't expecting that. So uh, it is an Indonesian movie that I didn't know existed, Rob. Sri Gala. Do you know the movie, Rob? Sri no, Gala? but now I want to no. know. Yeah, it came a little bit after after Friday the 13th. And the director is ripping off totally the ending with the boat and the jump scare. But there's other stuff in it too that I didn't expect, especially the motorboat chase, Rob, which I thought, okay, are we doing 007 here? So it was, was a nice ride. Next one, Cat in the Back, Rob. We need that graphic, people. We need that graphic. Cat in the Back. Uh, the movie is called from Asia, Full River Red. So hopefully good. Epic. From, from so you haven't watched this time. yet? No, I haven't watched it, Rob, because it is not the runtime of Martin Scorsese, but 160 minutes it is. So uh, Full River Red from Hong Kong. Uh, the next one, Cat in the Back 2, even if I know the series a little bit, I bought the Model Combat animated movie Legends, okay. which is, of course, Johnny Cage as a protagonist. The only thing, Rob, a little drawback immediately, Rob, when it comes to Model Combat, we actually want, you know, that 18, 18 certificate. It's only a 15 certificate, so but I will hope. <laughs> It says strong bloody violence. I hope I will get that with the animated movie Mortal Kombat Legends from Johnny Cage. The next one is a sequel uh, to the movie What Waters What the Waters Left Behind, and this is What the Waters Left Behind Scars, which is wow, that's as far cool. As I know the Spanish sequel to the first one. If I remember it correctly, Rob, the first one was shot in a location where there was a massive flooding, I believe. So they had nice production value for nothing. <laughs> if I remember correctly, but I, but I could but I could be but I could be wrong. What the water is left behind scars is the second one which came with reversible cover artwork so we get can get rid of the German rating. The next one I went to the post office yesterday had to pay some customs to get it from 101 films the memento special oh, edition i keep forgetting to order that yeah but it's not 4k rob it's just a blu-ray version of the movie and it comes let me just see with the steelbook of the movie yeah it's beautiful which i put Put the outer sleeve in it. And of course, swag that comes in it. Let me just see what we have here. This is from Jonathan, Olo, uh, Jonathan Nolan called Memento Mori. So I don't know if it's about the movie itself, what it entails actually. I have to check it out. The following is Jonathan Nolan's short story. Memento Mori, the inspiration. Oh, that's cool. Christopher Nolan's screenplay for the film. 
memento, so the inspiration from his brother. Then we have this one, this booklet for the movie, more filled with pictures of it. And then this is probably, wait, we're not finished yet. We have this nice with, with swag from the movie, especially this on the side. We <laughs> got the cool, cool photo of him. <laughs> you got Natalie, which look looks looks like the stuff in the movie. And we also have here these nice <laughs> little stuff that we haven't seen. So nice replicas of the stuff and here let me just see set of posters oh we have california driver's license yeah this is nice and here we have let me just see for leonard from natalie natalie let me just see oh this is actually ah uh, this is the disc two with the special features, actually. So uh, it could be that there is the movie in chronological order. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on, this one. So they put the second disc actually in that envelope. So this was the Memento special edition one. And I have one left, but for the end of the show. Okay, um, uh, one left for the end of the show. I'll um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's I see. Put it back. You take some. Uh, did, did we uh, got through the news, Miss Bill? Yeah, so everything that's coming out. Okay. No, we haven't got through the news. I've, I've oh, okay. uh, yeah, I got news. So, hello, uh, Robin Dieter. James Wheeler says yeah. I also have that version of Satan Tango. I love it too. Ooh. That's very right. cool. Um, Vegas Robocop says, here's a question I never Vegas. thought to ask. What was the film that disappointed you the most over the years? For me, Robocop 2 is a totally mean-spirited miss. I'll never forget <laughs> that feeling. Uh, that's actually, I got to say, Robocop 2 was was a tremendous disappointment. But as I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think the most disappointing movie I've ever seen in my entire life was Return of the Jedi. Now, a lot of people are like, it was the first Star Wars movie I ever saw. I understand why you guys all love Return of the Jedi. I do. But after coming off of Star Wars and Empire, I expected to get some kind of epic Lawrence of Arabia conclusion. And to me, Return of the Jedi has a really great opening when they rescue a swashbuckling opening with the rescue of Han Solo, and it's got a great ending. The rest of the movie is, to me, I'm like, who cares? Um, it doesn't really, there's not much that's going on in that movie. And the idea that, oh, there's a second Death Star. That, to me, you already blew up the first Death Star. The second Death Star is just a matter of time before it's going. And um, what I really hated about Return of the Jedi is Ian McDermott's Emperor. Because the Emperor, as we saw him, as we glimpsed, and you can't see this anymore because they changed it in the special edition, but Clive Revel the emperor and then the how they did the emperor's face uh, the the emperor was so much scarier to me in empire than it was in jedi cuz ian mcdermott looks speaking of snow white looks like the witch in snow white you know take your jedi weapon strike me down it'll be fully operational when your friends arrive i'm like come on man really <laughs> okay whatever it's fine <laughs> You want this? What am I five? Uh, anyway, I I uh, I understand. I get it. But they've now replaced the Emperor in Empire with Ian McDermott, which a lot of people probably even forget because there's a lot of people born later that never really saw the first version of Empire because the version we have of the special edition is now 25 years old, 26 years old. So people are used to Ian McDermott being an Empire, but he never was an Empire, and I saw Empire Strikes Back 26 times in the theater. So do you have a movie that disappointed you? Uh, yes, just a little one. Uh, since I'm a fan of Cheaper Creepers, I have had high hopes that Cheaper Creepers Reborn 
would perhaps ignite a franchise a little bit. But this movie had no right to be in the theater at all. What a piece of garbage. Don't mince words, dear. Tell Tell us what you really think. So it wasn't even a disappointment. It was atrocious. Atrocious. And and, uh, going in with Rob, I would put Rise rise of skywalker in it in it too. oh yeah well i was i had no high, high hopes for rise of skywalker but rise yeah. of skywalker is is but it uh, even even managed to oh yeah get loaded it's it's <laughs> it's unbelievable how horribly how horrible rise of skywalker is and exactly. and that there's a reason why jj abrams has not directed another feature film since then i mean I, and I, I know rob yeah and i know rob you're not the greatest fan of the Chucky franchise, but considering they keep track of the lore, everything is still in the lore. There's yeah, no yeah. retcon of anything. Nope, I'm, I'm with you. By the way, Channel Surf sends in a tip and says you can yeah. find a Magnetar UDP 800 4K player for $1,500 to $1,600, and it's rumored to be copied from the Oppo 203. Yeah. And it's available at Value uh, Electronics. Yeah, I read the review about it. It seems a little bit like Oppo internal internal stuff, considering right. the menu and stuff like that. And this is uh, the newer one. And like he said, I think the 800 one was the player they had released before the big one. It was the the cheaper one. In <laughs> the cheaper one, <laughs> fifteen hundred dollars. So I, I I got some more to show discs yeah. uh i did pick up the 4k of stan winston's pumpkin head oh nice i like pumpkin head um i like Me the too. creature design i like the yeah. th- this is a very yeah. halloweeny movie not just because it's yeah, called totally. pumpkin head the creature is very halloween now here's something interesting so this is of course uh, a scream factory disc and i think most of their scream factory 4ks are worth getting lots of special features obviously new scans they look great but this is interesting there is no reversible cover on this. Mm. I know. It's kind of a bummer. Not that I don't like this artwork, but this is not the original, obviously, key art. Exactly. Because yeah. they, they've created new stuff, so this is not the original key art. But, but have you opened the disc, uh, actually, Rob? And yeah. Looked inside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's no reversible key art. Yeah. Cut to the Blob remake. Yeah. Yeah. The, here's the Blob remake, Yeah. So the okay. Blob remake does, in fact, have a reversible Ooh, cover. Nice. Now, That's the one I remember more. Yeah. Now, what, I and I have to say that, you know what? I got to tell you, I hadn't, I saw this once in the theater. Okay. I never, it, it didn't, you know, I thought it was good. Chuck Russell directed this coming off of his Nightmare on Elm Street 3, which is one of the best Nightmare sequels. He also went on to direct movies like Eraser with Schwarzenegger. Um, so this movie is, I've always said that the horror, the three great horror remakes, the triumvirate of horror remakes are Philip Kaufman's Invasion of the Body Snatchers, John Carpenter's The Thing, and David Cronenberg's 1986 The Fly. People have always brought this up to me when I say that. And I've said, okay, well, the blob is, it's good, but I don't know if I would, I would put it up there with remakes. Um, but you know what? Having watched this and considering it again, it's the the reason that I, I I'm a snob, and the fact that this is a remake and it's called The Blob, <laughs> it's not exactly highbrow. Where where the remakes of Invasion and The Thing and The Fly are very highbrow, but in terms of being a, an effective remake of an old '50s movie, this is pretty fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it 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 I always I always remember the scene in the telephone. So, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's always stuck with me. And then the guy getting snitched. <laughs> There's a lot of great stuff in this movie. This movie yeah. is really fun. And I, you know, if you want to if you want to add this to your sci-fi horror collection, I'll tell you something. Do you know what I would put this with? You know what I and this is going to seem weird. I think one of the great unsung remakes. It's a George Romero remake. Yeah. Is The Crazies. Okay. The remake of The Crazies is really good. With Timothy, with Timothy, Timothy Oliphant. Oliphant. It's really good. It's really smart. Yeah. I love the remake of The Crazies. 
I don't know why, but if you're going to watch a double feature of remakes, I know this yeah, is from this and the crazies. Uh, I don't know why. To be honest, I just made that up right remake, now on the remake show. Remake double feature. Yeah, a remake double feature. The crazies to me is one of the great. It does not get enough love. You know, people don't really. But also, I would, I would. There's another movie, um, The Ruins. Did you see the ruins? Yeah, totally. The ruins yeah, is another. The ruins is a great double feature with the crazies that I've actually yeah. watched. The ruins. I think it was it was Scott Smith. The ruins was for me. I read the novel. Christopher Smith. Is Christopher Smith? No. 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 no I mean the the book was I think written by Scott Smith. Oh, okay. the, the same guy who wrote the the book A Simple Plan that Raimi's movie was based on. Yeah. I read both A Simple Plan and The Ruins in one sitting. They were one Ooh. sitting books. Those books were so fucking good. And when I sat down and I read them, and I'd heard, I think it was Stephen King who might have said that The Ruins yeah. was great. But I loved A Simple Plan so much that The Ruins was something I got day one. It was a day one purchase for me. I took it home. I opened it up, and I sat down there breathless. And I think The Ruins is a great, is a great adaptation of the book. I love The Ruins. And I wish, where's that 4K? Put that out. Yeah. Come on, Shout Factory. At least we have a, have a, have a Blu-ray. Blu-ray yeah. Anyway, so there's that. Then I have two more. And I don't give a fuck what people are going to say about this, okay? I think any anybody, you have to have it in your collection. I do not apologize. I don't. Well, I, I did show what, what, what I had in my collection, you know? What I had. <laughs> uh, I had to get it, Rob. Why? Why wouldn't you buy Barbie? And you're right. Why wouldn't One I? Of the big, biggest, biggest movie of the year. I mean, it's subversive. You, have to have it. you gotta have it. You know, 4K. Yeah. It's gonna look great. I haven't even opened nice. it yet. I'm just saying, hey, I bought Barbie. Nice. I don't apologize. And well, then the last thing I, the last thing I picked up, which was hideously expensive, but I had to get it because it's the fourth in a series. Uh, <laughs> the last Evangelion movie uh, the animated Thrice Upon a Time I had to get the 4K the other ones are, go figure the other ones are only on Blu-ray here is the 4K I think this was like 70 bucks or something 80 bucks this is the concluding chapter it's I don't know I don't know why we always get I, raped. Unfortunately, Rob, I only see 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 a white box. I know you can't. Let me see if I can. It's got I, the no, name. No, no, yeah, okay, yeah, there okay, you go. Great. Evangelion, and I don't know why we constantly are being. Uh, look, yeah. I get it. I get it. You know, and this is this is the fourth Evangelion movie, but it's three plus one, uh, and it's it's. It's got a special disc. I mean, again, these anime companies, man, they're killing us. Yeah. I love uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I love my giant robots. I mean, this is all philosophical and spiritual. If you don't know anything about this franchise, you're probably going, what? Uh, but I love this. And this this movie is fucking bonkers. And I don't know if it's a satisfying conclusion. But so okay. you've got you've got a book. comes with a book. Uh, really printed nicely. I don't even. It's got artwork and storyboards and character designs and all that. So it's got that in there. Are you lost with the movie, Rob? If you haven't seen the once before, it. Oh, dude. <laughs> uh, you, of all the movies I probably own, I you have to watch all four. And then if you do, I'm not even saying it's going to make sense then. But but <laughs> watch the show. It's got these pretty cool art cards, Ooh, you know, nice. like you. There, it's really nice. I mean, but the other ones are not in 4K. But watch, they're going to announce next week that there's a box set with all four of them on 4K, and I'll be like, as you say, God damn it! Damn it! But um, so it comes with art cards. Then I don't even know what this is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bye bye, all of Evangelion. Uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, is it a poster? Oh, it is. That's cool. Bye bye. That's kind of a neat poster, nice. but it's it's got this stupid secondary fold in the top. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, man, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, uh, so I bought that, and it was ridiculously expensive. But hey, okay, uh, I had to have it. 
to go with the rest. But I really like. But it is from from uh, the American market. From the yes, market. yes, okay. it is the American market. But I had to bro, I had to bust on the uh, special edition. Yeah. Even though, uh, and, and the way every one of these releases of it's four, you know, four feature films. It's a retelling, a reboot of the series. Neon Genesis Evangelion, which had a reboot of its own ending. I, I can't even... Just If you want to read up on the series, it's really interesting. It's really worth watching. It's beautiful. It's strange. Uh, and I like the mecha designs. So here you go. Great. Awesome. So that's all I got this week. Okay. Should we uh, do the Super Chats? I think we're caught up. Um... Yeah, we're, we're caught up. Okay. Okay. Then we have, Rob, the news section, you said. We Would you like to hear story? all the news yeah. that's fit to print? We do. We, we, we have the news section. We uh, already showed some, some titles, but not all. Yeah. No, I, that, that is true. That is true. And uh, hold on. Let me just get the last in here. So, all the news that's fit to print. So, of course... Uh, Bill already mentioned this. The Expanse, the complete series, is coming out. Uh-oh. Why did you disappear? Dieter has disappeared. Hang on. There you go. For real. Um, so The Expanse is coming out. Uh, the complete series. Very cool. We've already talked about The Color Purple. Obviously, Oppenheimer wrote, uh, coming out in 4K. We mentioned... And the... actually, Rob, sorry to do it. I think what I like, that Oppenheimer already comes out now in November. It's yeah. not announced in for three months or four months down right. the road. That's right. It's it comes great. out in it's November, great. which is cool. Uh, the Police Academy, the box set coming out from Shout Select. More Warner titles from Shout Select. So good on them, but that's on Blu-ray, not 4K. Uh, we have, okay, this is pretty interesting. This is coming from Indicator. Now, you know I'm a John yeah. Frankenheimer fan. I love his 60s output. Like, he made this in the early 70s impossible object i've never seen this movie before coming out from indicator you guys go i'll definitely be picking this up indicator or from powerhouse films in the uk they always do a great job can't wait to get this this is one of two frankenheimer movies that crazy i'm getting all my john frankenheimer fix uh talk about uh, anime you have the this set um the nadia movies uh, coming out both of them are coming out in 4k which is yeah. cool that uh, again probably if you're an anime fan uh this will probably be hideously expensive but it's coming out so more anime <laughs> in 4k bring it on uh for those of you who are fans um the horseman this is another john frankenheimer movie yeah. Uh, that stars Omar Sharif that I've never even seen. Lee Taylor Young's in it. Jack Palance yeah. is in it. Haven't, didn't even know. Hadn't seen it. Looking forward to it. We had, we had cover. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is, I don't know if this is 88 films. I'm not sure, but hey, yeah. it's coming out from the UK. Okay. Um, then we have Miami Vice is also being released by, this is 88 films. This is the Miami yeah. Vice I've already got, but 88 films is putting it out. I've got the Steelbook, but I figured I'd, Mention it, that they're releasing it again. Uh, Mudbound is another movie that's coming out from Criterion in July, or in uh, January. That's coming out. Um, here is a restoration from Film Masters, the 60th anniversary of The Terror that Jack Nicholson and Boris Karloff are in. So that's kind of cool that they're putting this out. Um this is Tokyo Vice, the HBO series, yeah. is coming out in the UK on disc, season one. I really enjoyed this series. I read the book it was based on, so okay. it's cool that, that that's coming out. Uh, Scarlet Street coming out from Kino Lorber. This is another Fritz Lang movie. So Fritz Lang uh, with Edward G. Robinson. Between Warner Archive and Kino Lorber, uh, we're getting a lot of great stuff. And as I said, Criterion's also putting out the Apu trilogy, Train Spotting. And the Coen Brothers' Blood Simple, all in 4K, all must owns. They're Which also. You need putting... to be careful, Robert. It's the same cover as the Blu ray has. I, I know. I don't know why they don't change it. And of course, uh, uh, John Sayles' film Lone Star, which I also really like, is coming out in 4K, which is exciting. And they're also putting out Chantal Ackerman, 
if you're a Chantal Ackerman fan, you can get this collection. I like I love their collection of filmmakers uh, because people seem to have forgotten uh, Sophie Scholl, which is a movie about uh, uh, an anti-Nazi film. I know we live in a pro-Nazi world now, but uh, okay. Uh, this is a really interesting movie, uh, and it's really great, so that's coming out. And then um, Rod Taylor and Kara White, The Man Who Had Power Over Women. Also coming out from Indicator. Don't know what it's about, but it's something I've looked forward to my whole life. And I've never achieved it, but I want to learn how to have power over women. <laughs> so there you go. And then we have, uh, did I put the, oh, I already put Impossible yep. Object. They're also putting out uh, Jenna, Christopher Lee. This is one of his favorite roles. He plays okay. uh, He plays the leader of Pakistan. Uh, and when Pakistan was founded, so it's about the partition and all that. And Christopher Lee told me this is what was one of his roles he was most proud of. He told me himself when I interviewed him, I've never seen this movie. Indicator is putting it out. So that's pretty exciting. Now, Great. Joe Lynch, Joe Lynch's Suitable Flesh. I haven't seen this yet with Barbara Crampton and Heather Graham. I'm dying to see this movie. Um, Bruce Davids is in this too. And I can't wait to see this. This is also coming out on disc. So go Joe Lynch. Um, very excited to see this. I'm a huge Barbara Crampton fan, obviously. So that's coming out. And I think this is on Shudder. And I love okay. when we, we get the Shudder movies uh, that come out. Uh, Joe, if, Joe Lynch, who did, who did Everly, Rob? Who did what? Who did Everly? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. great. Yeah, so you know, to, to, to Joe Lynch flash. is great. Didn't know. Didn't know that he had, had a new movie. Yeah, Joe Lynch is great. So go Joe. And uh, this movie, watch the trailer for this. If you see, this is yeah. also, I should point out, it is an HG, uh, HG Love Girl. It's H, H, not HG Wells, not HG. It's H, <laughs> this is based on an HP Lovecraft story, kind of okay. like From Beyond was and kind of like uh, Reanimator was. So this is definitely bar the Barbara, you can now have the Barbara Crampton triptych I guess Stuart Gordon's uh, From Beyond and and Reanimator and add this uh, to it. So there you go. That's coming out. Exciting to get that. Excited to get that. Uh, here are the top twenty sellers of the week. Uh, this is overall. Yeah. Uh, Transformers: Rise of the Beasts, Prey, Strays, Spider Man yeah. Across the Spider Verse, Winnie the Pooh: Blood and Honey. Probably because people are buying <laughs> it at Walmart. <laughs> Number five, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh: Blood, Blood and Honey overall bestseller. The Super Mario Brothers movie, Elemental. The Boogeyman is new. John Wick yeah. Chapter Four and Fast X. But those are Boogeyman. overall, so that includes DVD. That includes everything. Yeah. Then we go to top top selling. These are the top selling Blu-ray discs. Transformers: Rise of the Beast is number one. Neither one of us bought that, did we? Uh, I have, but it isn't. Now, it hasn't reached me, Rob. It hasn't oh, okay. Reached me. I gotta get it. I gotta. I'll see you know. Super Mario yeah, Brothers. As, Sp as, as just just for the sound alone, Rob. Just yeah. for the sound alone. Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, Prey, Talk to Me, Strays being the only new title here. John Wick Chapter Four. Oh, no, it's not totally true. John Wick Chapter Four, Fast X, Rosemary's Baby, and then uh, of course the Boogeyman, and um, I don't have Rosemary's Baby yet. And top selling 4Ks, Transformers: Rise of the Beast. Look at that catalog title, Rosemary's uh, Baby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number two, I haven't seen that yet. I heard uh, Tom over at Midnight's Edge was complaining about the transfer. I got to look into this. Um, okay. Spider Man Across the Spider Verse at number three, number four, Lord of the Rings: The Motion Picture Trilogy in 4K. They probably re-released that. And then look at this, Prey, number five, Pumpkinhead, yeah, number Pumpkinhead. six, nice. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, number seven, and Megan is number eight on 4K. The Steelbook. the Steelbook, yep. And then Fast X is number nine, and John Wick Chapter Four. So that's all the news I found fit to print. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Or Megan was just released as a 4K. That that was right. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Universal, release it immediately. The 4K. Not let us don't don't let us double dip the chip. No. So we're done. I okay. mean, that's. Uh, do you have a final sh thing to show? Uh, fun final thing and. The live chat, Rob. The live chat and some super chats. All right. If okay. you want to take a break, Rob, 
You can do it now. Uh, and I would go. Well, Adventure yeah. Square says Indicator yeah. is dropping their pH points program on January 2024, so better cash in now. And I don't know what they amount to, but it could be useful. I bought things directly from them. Maybe I'll go for the yeah. Indicator. Uh, I might have to do that. So, yeah. So that's it. We're caught Wait, up. Should I do the do the live chat then, Rob? Well, no, no. Oh, you're going to wait and show your thing at the very end? Yeah, exactly, Rob. I want want to keep... Because okay, I haven't, well, haven't even opened it, Rob. I haven't even opened it. It's still in the package. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you take... Uh, you know, I know how much everyone looks forward to the live chat. Yeah. No, just Except kidding. you, Rob. So you can can take a break, Rob. Okay. You... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn so, it over to you. Yeah. Previously on Let's Get Physical Media. Justin Toner, you're still my favorite German, even after all the shenanigans. John Levev, you guys rule. Nice to know. Uh, Molly Lenny, physical media is like chlamydia. You think you got rid of it, because, <laughs> but, but comes back when you least expect it. It never truly dies. Troy Ulysses, honestly, best buy. We had uh, covered the best buy situation already last week. Honestly, best buy has been dying for years. Their loss will not be felt in the physical media world. No money, G. Best buy is heading towards bankruptcy and fast. Sad, really. Victor Fontaine, so the four big winners at the theater are Barbie, Spider Man, Cross Spider Man, Oppenheimer, and Swifty. It seems that way. It seems that way. Uh, Tim Hens, I'm to, speaking of Starship Troopers, doing my part to keep physical media alive. I bought three Schnappchens Blu rays earlier this week. EAP 1608. This will be a long day remembered. It has seen the end of physical media at Best Buy and soon the end of the rebellion. So, what is the rebellion? Us collectors are the, are the rebellion? Or the other way around. Paul Allen Brunotto, even when Best Buy stops carrying DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4K movies in their stores, next year doesn't mean next year doesn't mean physical media is dead, not by a long shot. Rabbit 32. Rob has no hope for the future. Michael Lido. One thing that Rob and Dita seldom talk about is that the sound is so much better. On physical media. Michael Lido, it's a given. It's a given as sound freaks as we are. Tommy Ricknell, our friend from the Iceland Islands in Finland, speaking Swedish. My best friend who doesn't own a single movie on physical media told me, uh, told he and many others are already tired of streaming. Okay. Robert Thomas Watson, no debate. Morricone is the GOAT. More film scores, more diverse films. Altmetal. I like I Come With The Rain, which was the movie that I showed from Josh Hartnett. Good to know, Altmetal. I have to watch it. Watch it again, to remind myself. Uh, speaking of the movie that I showed last week, Gallow Walkers from Wesley Snipes, Freddie Laney. Freddie Lane informs us that was his first out of movie after he came out back from prison to the tech stuff. Tim Hens, how I choose to watch the Halloween movies? One, two, then H20. The others don't exist to me. Uh, I showed the others last week on 4K. Irene Jobson, is that the Nicole Kidman movie? Yes, Irene, that is the Nicole Kidman movie. Uh, now I'm missing the context. Adventure Square S, is it both are and PG-13, and unfortunately, I'm lost. I lost the context. I lost the context, but I think probably, probably yes. Uh, okay, let me just see. Tim Hens goes on. Though I do admit, Halloween 3 has its moment, its problem. It should have been titled Season of the Witch only. Danzig, 1979. It's not 4K, though, right? The mist, of course. 1979. The Mist is a 4K release with the 4K of this black and white version and the color version. And you get both movies as a Blu-ray too. 
in and they're ama- the quality is amazing great great to hear Rob Tim Hens, I'm with Rob too never really got into the mist the ending never really shocked me so considering the ending of the mist William Haynes you're crazy ending was great Robert Thomas Watson the mist is a very ordinary monster B movie the nihilistic ending elevates it to big style Gary Smith, I despise the ending to The Mist. Binman 42, I love the ending of The Mist. And it's my understanding that the author of the book loved it as well. Not for everyone, however. The author meaning Stephen I, King? <laughs> probably, yes. Uh, Gary Smith loved the dial of Destiny. Okay. Adventure Square, I heard Jones at the end wanted to crawl to that island bond boss before it exploded. <laughs> Uh, Victor Fontaine, after 42 years, Raiders of the Lost Ark is still the best movie ever ever made. It was the perfect blend of character, mystique, intrigue, atmosphere, action, stunt, suspense, and breakneck pacing. No money, G. New movies are watchable. A good, a good take on how to perceive new movies. No money, G. New movies are watchable if you don't pay attention to the plots. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rob, you showed Leave it to the Beaver, and I told you it's not very known here in Germany. Right. And I, I did send you the, the WhatsApp, how it was called here. It was called Erwachsen müsste man sein, uh, which means you should have, you should be grown up. Uh, Wookie Fodder, Corey Feldman back on top, baby. <laughs> I don't know about that if you've seen the concert performances that he gives. It's uh, if you say back on top, okay. <laughs> uh, does Plato is still is Dita still preaching to the dark side? I'm not preaching, I'm, 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 I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Uh, Albion is that the one with the bus scene? No, Mark, this is Lesser Face Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. It is not the new one, it was on Netflix with the bus scene. Scene. It's nineteen. It's from nineteen ninety. Yeah, exactly. Adventure Square Manhunter is a thousand times better because Rob showed us uh, Red Dragon his four K, and people chimed in about Manhunter and the Alex Orba, I agree one hundred percent. Densic asks, did I see Manhunter was getting a four K release too? Not to my knowledge, Rob. I Manhunter think it is. I think okay. actually it is getting a 4K release okay. as well. Nice. Tommy Ricknell, theatrical version of The Exorcist is way superior, if you ask me. Here, here. Uh, Saw, director's cut, and wow, what a disappointment. Theatrical is a masterpiece. I don't know that Saw, the director's cut, is that much different from the theatrical, Tommy. I have to, I have to check that. Uh, Danzig, 1979. The power of double dipping compels you. Exactly. <laughs> Tina Gussman, Robert, can you post some good sites to buy movies? Actually, Tina, go to Amazon and if it's the boutique labels, all they always have their store itself where you can By the way, speaking of which, board. I just realized yeah. um hang on. Um uh Hitcher Hitchhiker 42. Yeah. Asks, uh, did I get to pre-order the BFI Exorcist set? Ooh. I was able to late last week. If not, I can send it to your PO box by DHL when I get it. Well, thanks to the Vixter, Vicky, mm. uh, the Vixter hooked me up. You know, I gotta send her some PayPal uh, love, and uh, I'm gonna get it. So I'm very excited about that. I don't know what the deal was. They must have printed more. Rup, rup. Don't yeah. get. Get ahead of yourself. Wait on the shipping notice. You know. Well, Before there's we that. Don't get the shipping notice. You know. Don't say you will get it. We remember the total recall. Follow. You know. We had pre-ordered it. You know? That is that is true. So, so you are you fingers are crossed. But correct. You know, let's let's hope you will get the shipping notice this week. Blazing Asian. Oh, uh, sorry, Rob. Do you want no, to- no, that's a okay. fair okay. point. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> Blazing Asian. For the horror movie people, this Halloween, Dark Harvest, 
best horror movie I've seen this year, there's an Asian Dark Harvest, was exactly, it was great. Dr. Nitrogen's Musical Empire. How can movies not film in 4K be released as 4K edition? I think Bill mentioned it. They upscale 2K masters. So you would have a 4K edition then. Uh, Channel Surf. Not caseworthy, sleeve only. Exactly. Not caseworthy, sleeve only. Only. Admiral, you can still watch Tune 2 prior to the Marvels if you skip the Marvels, considering the delay of Tune 2. And this was nice, Rob, from Power B Engine. Hello from South Korea. Nice. Uh, Stubble McShave. From experience, I can tell you that the size of the bribe determines if Dita reads a chat comment. Stubble your checks in the mail. So let me just see. Equity Group. Dita needs to release an audiobook. <laughs> I don't know about that Equity Group. I don't know how many <laughs> takes you would have need to me to record that I get one sentence out clearly. Okay, Rob. This was the live chat from last week. Well, that's that's exciting. Uh, thanks everybody for playing at home. Yeah, uh, it's good to have you all here. We we can't have a show without our 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 loyal viewers. Exactly, Rob. Exactly. That's why we incorporate them as as good as we can. Uh, boy. Uh, yeah. Scarped's domain says I got Mark okay. of the Devil from Vinegar Syndrome this week in Ooh. 4K. Oh, really? Already? Uh, Herbert Lom, hot wenches and witch torture. What more to ask for? I didn't realize it was already out. Does that mean Mother's Day and blood sucking freaks probably, are out too? Probably. I think wow. they had all end of October releases. I would think so because they had that package with the five titles together. So it would make sense that they are all out already. Yeah. But you still don't know, Rob, that you, you won't only get Mark of the Devil, I think. Yeah, dude, I just, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I can't get blood suck. <laughs> I just can't do it, man. Like I, you know, do I want to get blood? You know what? Though maybe. Yeah. Perhaps if if, if a price drop happens, you know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if you can. I don't know. Mother's Day. It's a tough one. It's tough for me. Yeah. But yeah. Mark of the Devil's a must own. Flat out. So, what are you going to do? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but even Mother's Day, Rob, is one of those video nasties, you know, which it's, uh, it, uh, somehow it, uh, it, deserves, it deserves a spot <laughs> in the collection. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, in Germany especially, Rob, because I think it was, was uh, forbidden back in the day. Yeah. It's Would think so. Uh, yeah, and now now you can 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 get it in 4K. Insane, insane. No. It is insane, but Mark of the Devil's worth yeah. getting. Yeah. So, anyway, Two Hundred Watt Studio says Germany yeah. had their version of Leave It to Beaver called Leave It to Himmler. Very wacky, yet disturbing too. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, uh, I just, we, uh, with in light of current events, I just can't be making fun of that kind of stuff. But uh, that's funny, yeah. though. Two hundred watt studio. I got to. Uh, yeah. That is dark, sardonic humor. Yes, it is. Definitely. So, do I get blood sucking freaks, and do I get Mother's Day? Uh, you know, I don't know. What are yeah. you gonna do? Yeah. So. So where uh, are we Roberto at? Suarez, Roberto Suarez sent it in the super chat, and he, he says, said, "Show Dita the, the video, video of Clark's Clark setup. setup." Well, yeah, I will. I I should. Well, okay. you know what? I mean, uh, Roberto did send it, send it to me. So hang on. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he sent it to me on Facebook. I have to look, or either that, or it was a it was a message. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, Clark's Clark's. Uh, it, it is pretty impressive. 
But I don't think. Let me see if I can get it yeah. off of. Um, yeah, I think I. I don't think I. I have to. Uh, yeah, I, reformat I it. That's... Well, it's. Um, uh, um. Oh, you know what? Um, Uh, somebody writes, hi, Rob, I hate to waste your time with this yeah. text, but I was listening to your episode on physical media and the scene where the man and wife are confronting each other about the fact that he's having an affair, that there's a woman in bed with him when she comes in from work or wherever. That's Sid <laughs> Caesar and Imogene Coco is his wife, and he convinces her that there was nothing going on, and he goes back to the living room, and he sits down and gets his paper and his pipe, and he says, what's for dinner? Yeah, I need to know the title. That's what I I need to know, but I can't. I've I, Roberto texted me the video, and I have to get it on off of my phone. So I'll have to. I'll play it next week. I'll play okay. the video of Clark's setup next week. So um, I have one one thing left, Rob, to show. I know. Do you want to show it? I would think so, Rob. It's still packaged, Rob. I haven't even opened it. I wow. What what I was hoping is is in it. So, what if it's a human head? See. That would be a, quite a surprise to, to, for the live show. <laughs> so, I hope it comes undamaged. And let me just see. Okay, we have blue bubble wrap. Rip. Oh, it's inside another another box okay. Let's get it open here and the second one here so now should be able no Not completely no ah okay here it is here it is and i decided to go with the arrow exclusive drop. I got my Hellraiser oh. box set and I decided to go with Cheddar because Pinhead, I have many covers where Pinhead is front and center. So I decided for the arrow oh. exclusive. For it. So let's open, open this baby up. And I was really surprised Rob, because I wouldn't, I was thinking I wouldn't get it before the end of the week. And, this afternoon, when I went go outside, I watched in my mailbox and I was surprised to find it in there because I wasn't expecting it to get here in time. So let us just see what the box holds. We have the, or the folder. Yeah. For it. So this is the design here actually the tools are in it so let's see what will happen when i put it out here shiny so shiny exactly so outer shell okay let's just see what we have here oh here is the thick the thick a very thick book considering considering this this franchise just see a lot of mine has thick. not been dispatched from i ordered it okay. from amazon yeah uh so you get the pinnet the pinnet cover rob uh yes okay so thick a thick book is in it and then we get the four movies in this diggy pack. So I think this yours should be different then, Rob. Considering this is the mouse of cheddar that came out here in the box. So yours with Pinet should be a little bit different. Wait. Oh, here. Yeah. yeah, it comes out this way. <laughs> it's a little bit like like a model combat thing here <laughs> so and then oh 
I can see already the discs flip-flopping in here. So this is the, the old thing from the back. And there we have, let me just see if everything's correct. Hellraiser 1, Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, and Hellraiser Bloodline. In, hopefully I got the right box set, Rob. Yes, they are in 4K. I'm in hell. Help me, which happens to me every every week here. <laughs> yeah. So, Rob, I hope this was a nice last piece for. It is, and I'm uh, I'm insanely jealous. You know, um, mine has yet to be dispatched. Yeah, I don't know why. But it's great, and that we can look at yours. Uh, how different. It will yeah. be. No, that's, I mean, it's, you know, it's obviously to get those movies in 4K. And I, I went with um, yeah. uh, Connie. Hopefully, Connie Rob, the last, the, la the last time we buy Hellraiser stuff. <laughs> yeah, I went with Connie saying we saw Hellraiser 1 and 2 on yeah. uh, film prints at the Arrow. The American Cinematheque showed them with Peter Atkins uh, there speaking. So that was a real treat. Quite enjoyed that. So, yeah, dude, that's good stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, before we end the show, I did want to yeah. read an article no uh, to sort of leave you guys with some. This is sort of, yeah, that's a beautiful box, dude. Uh, this article comes to us from Thomas K. Arnold. This was in Media Play News. It was published on October 14th. Yeah. And the headline for the article is Best Buy's Exit from Disc Sales Has Nothing to Do with the Market's Viability. Disc fans, don't take it personal. Best Buy's decision to stop selling DVDs, Blu-ray discs, and 4K Ultra HD Blu-rays, both at its 1,000-plus physical stores in the United States and Canada online, isn't really a repudiation of the market it dominated in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Rather, it's part of a strategic shift away from its legacy computer electronics and toward toward all things high tech as best buy says on its website our purpose is to enrich lives through technology on best buy's latest earnings call ceo cory berry told analysts the retailer wants to expand into growing categories like pc gaming and newer offerings such as greenworks cordless power tools wellness products like O'Raring, Epson, short throw projectors, e-bikes and scooters, and Love Sack home furnishing products? Best Buy also is investing heavily in health technology. In March, Barry on the earnings call said, the role of technology within healthcare is becoming more important than ever, and our strategy is to enable care at home for everyone. Studio sources tell me that Best Buy's share of the disc business had shrunk to a meager 4% based on DEG estimates that consumers spent a little over $2 billion last year on disc purchases. That amounts to just $80 million, or less than $80,000 per store, and much less when you factor in online sales. Contrast that with Best Buy's purchase two years ago of a remote patient monitoring company, Current Health, for $400 million which amounts to five years of disc sale revenues. Since then, the push into health tech has revved up. The company expanded its relationships between current health and other health systems to the point where its at-home health business now works with five of the 10 biggest healthcare systems in the United States, according to Best Buy's health website. Last year, Best Buy began selling hearing aids as part of what it called, in a news release, a new experience for hearing devices that includes an expanded collection of hearing devices, an in-store experience in more than 300 stores, and a new online hearing assessment tool. So I guess when we've blown out our ears listening to Atmos mixes, we can go to Best Buy and get hearing aids. In March, Best Buy partnered with Atrium Health, one of the country's largest hospital operators, to set up virtual hospital rooms in people's homes. The retailer began training and deploying Geek Squad agents to provide and set up in-home wearable technology that allows an atrium healthcare team to monitor a patient's vital signs. 
just last month in September. Best Buy announced plans to work with a Pennsylvania-based Geisinger, one of the biggest integrated health health, health systems in the country, on co-developing a bundle of technological and services that will enable healthcare technology and services that will enable healthcare organizations to operate their own chronic condition management programs. Most recently, in early October, Best Buy announced it will start selling continuous glucose monitoring devices that require a prescription. A move Forbes says is opening the door to broader future healthcare product offerings ordered by physicians for their patients. The push into healthcare tech is so great a corporate priority that Best Buy has even launched its own Best Buy Health website on which it says Best Best Buy Health meets you at the intersection of health and technology. Best Buy Health is here to help enable care and support personal connections using our world-class omnichannel capabilities, distribution and logistics, strong analytics, in-home services, and compassionate caring center call specialists. Meanwhile, a home health care article maintains that over the coming year, Best Buy expects to grow its Best Buy health sales faster than its base business as it leans more heavily into its at-home care platform. So disc fans, remember, it's not about the DVD. Just as people change, businesses change, and Best Buy has charted a new path to a completely different destination. I found that as somebody who is a futurist, I consider myself a futurist myself, I, I can't argue with that. That they're going to get into, you know, as we have more technologically savvy healthcare and a lot of us are all getting older, I guess I can go to Best Buy and buy all kinds of healthcare as I'm in my final days on planet Earth. I can be hooked up to whatever they're going to hook me up to while I watch <laughs> my old discs and that old archaic 20th century technology discs. So... And I, you know what, I, I can't argue with that sound reasoning. I mean, I, I can't. Yeah. Oh. So I, I found they've left our shuttle bay, Rob. Yeah, they've left our shuttle bay, and I understand. Better business. What are you gonna do? I mean, yeah. I there's I, I honestly I can't um, I can't fault them uh, for that. I mean, there's no what do you what do you you know you can't. What are you going to say? Yeah. You know? Business has, has to has to thrive, you know? And if uh, physical media isn't it doing for them anymore, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Roberto did send me this video, but it's not compatible yeah. with QuickTime, so I got to figure this out. So okay. I'll show it next week. I'll show Clark's system next yeah. week. And speaking of next week, unfortunately, we have now three times in a row I have done physical media, which means, unfortunately, next week I have night shift. Rob has to do it on its own. Perhaps he will invite other people. Or we will take the Sunday off. It's up to him. Unfortunately, I can be there next week. A 200 Watt Studio apologizes for his Himmler joke. Hey, you never have to apologize. Oh. Come on. <laughs> We're all friends here. <laughs> um Okay, you have to. I, so, work must intrude. I understand. I've been gone off. Yeah. I've been gone off the internet for the last five days myself for working, doing more crisis medicine. Our fourth season, we shot. Very exciting. So yeah. and I even got a video where Rob tried to throw me under the bus, but luckily Kiro was there and said he has shit too in his house. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even tell her to say that. She's a smart cookie. That yeah, yeah. shirts. Yeah. When yeah. we started doing crisis <laughs> medicine, she was thirteen. Now she's nineteen and. She's studying counter. What did she say she was studying? International relations, counter terrorism, and Germany, and and German. Why? Yeah, she's, I don't know she's why, learned. But, well, her mother's her mother speaks fluent German, and yeah. so she learned. She went to a German school, so yeah. immersive German school. So they 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 can speak your language, as you know from the video. Yeah. Nice. Well, I guess that was bring, nice, nice uplifting thing video. To, yeah, there, to, there you go. Work. The youth of America is speaking yeah. Germany and working on counter counterintelligence and terrorism, which yeah. seems to be what we're going to need more of in the coming days. Yeah. Hopefully not, yeah. but it looks like we are. Uh, so, and on that, what studio came came uh, in for our last super chat? Best Buy for an eight K catheter catheter <laughs> with Dolby with Vision. vision. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, that's uh, say, that's funny. Yeah. Und er sagt, jede Person, die du triffst, 
hat eine Geschichte zu erzählen, die du noch zu hören hast. Alles, was du tun musst, ist zuhören. <lacht> Every single person you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear. And all you have to do is listen. And with that, I want to thank everyone for generously supporting the channel via Super Chats, tips, memberships. We're going to have a membership call again next week. Sorry, I was gone. I was traveling yesterday. Uh, I want to thank Tom Jr. Jackson for being a great moderator. I want to thank Lord Toth Tom. for also being a great moderator and the lovely Justin Toner for also being a great moderator. So thank you, boys, for always being here. And I want to thank all of you for watching. And uh, pretty good crowd today. It was good. It was uh, enjoyable. Yep. I want to thank, of course, Bill Hunt for graciously coming on the show for an hour. You can go find him over, of course, at thedigitalbits.com or Bill Hunt Bits on X Twitter. I don't know if he's on Blue Sky or anywhere else, but that's where you can find him, Bill Hunt Bits. And I guess we can say, hey, it's time to end the show and go watch some discs, man. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, end, end the day. End the day. <laughs> 